please, please, please Instagram work this time. I need you to, to pull through for me. Last week on Thursday was a hot mess. It was awful. Oh, the world came crashing down. Instagram, no, I just Instagrammed it. But let's pretend that the world came crashing down and that meant you were all, I, I would say, you know, I was deprived of doing, uh, deprived? Deprived of doing a gab and doodle. But in fact, you were all deprived of being able to see a gab and doodle. Oh, so what do we have? We have a special two day night gab and doodle with our return guest. Our return guest, whoa. Technically, I think the person that's been on, no, I have I had someone on a second time? I guess on Game and Doodle, but it's the first person. Nope, nope, Charlie, my son. Mm, mm, he's the only person that's been on twice. Officially, but Lisk Fang, who's done all these amazing books uh, on the Everest and the Great Barrier Reef and all sorts of uh, advertising and editorial work and everything under the sun, um, was so kind uh, to hang in with us as the world of Instagram fell apart um, on Thursday and has said that they would come back tonight to haunt your dreams. Oh, so I'm going to let Lisk in in just one second, uh, and then we'll have our lovely conversation. Let me just sit up my, uh, my iPad so it doesn't fall down. Um, so anyways, uh, what I want to do is say thank you for anybody that's tuned in that's never tuned into these because they don't have Thursday nights to, to watch or whatever. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the comments here, ask us anything. And what I'm going to, I always keep saying what I'm going to try to do. Um, what I will do, hey, look at that, positive thinking. I will try to see what... No, I just said a try again. I will look at my feed and... Tr no, I keep saying try. And I will answer and ask the questions to Lisk uh, of what you all post in there. And we'll see what we can get out of out of all of us. Um, and so I'm just going to pin that at the bottom. So if you have anything, just put that in those comments for us. Otherwise, it's a Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Gab and Doodle. And I'll be back on Thursday with another one. So I got two this week. Imagine the strain on this brain, if you know what I mean. All right, here we go. I'm going to let in our special guest. And I need to do a little bippity-boppity-boop. Fingers. Cross our fingers. We're crossing our fingers. Fingers. Hi. <laughs> Hello. You know, if Instagram shuts down right now, then we know we're both cursed. We know something has gone horribly wrong. But how? How's your weekend? Uh, it's been it's been very good. Uh, I'm just like uh, sleeping a lot. <laughs> and then, I am. Uh, yeah, I was. It was my birthday, so we we had some like um, birthday cake situation. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, you're a, a, a spry like 18, right? Something, something nice and young. Um, thank you again for putting up with the nonsense that happened last week. Um, and and uh, I, I know that it was not my fault. It was Instagram's fault, but I still feel bad of uh, not having some like precursor uh, cursor warning that says, hey, if something goes wrong, this is what we do. <laughs> Um, but it went wrong uh, every which way. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, what I am going to ask of you, for anybody that didn't see last time, is uh, will you give a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? I'm a, I'm, I'm, my name is Elisk Fan. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a freelance illustrator based in New York. Uh, I, I did a lot of editorial illustrations uh, after graduated from the grad program of um, Micah, Maryland Institute of Color of JAR. And um, <clears throat> after that, I started to do um, like some children's books uh, around like 2016. I, I've never thought of doing children's books um, when I was in school. So it was like from editorial uh, to a children's book and uh, some advertising at the same time. So it's been like everywhere. And all 
all over the place. Yeah, you get your work in uh, in front of a lot of eyes, not just little kids and not just adults. They all get to see it of some sort. Um, and and you've worked with uh, a publisher that I'm I'm sort of I'm looking at the books here to the side, the Flying Eye Books. Uh, I'm very like uh, what's the word? I'm uh, not, uh, jealous, envious of uh, getting to work with them because I think they're just they put out stellar books just constantly. And so having two, uh, two books that you have out with them, The Great Barrier Reef and uh, Everest. Uh, and those are, these, for anybody that doesn't know, these aren't just like picture books. These are intense, how many pages? Do you know how many pages these were? Around like 88 pages for each yeah. nonfiction. Yeah. And pretty much full illustrations throughout. There, I, I mean, there's little vignettes here and there, but rarely is it sort of uh, sparse in the imagery and so that's that's a ton of work on these guys so um well tonight uh again i'm gonna give the little like the rules of, of play um which are if at any point you need to leave you tell me and i won't be offended <laughs> you can say you can say instagram broke again and and you can just sign off and that's okay uh and uh two uh, I know we talked about doing houses or something of the sort last time. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do that again. I, I had my stuff set up, and so I'm just going to do that. Um, I, is that what you're going to do as well, or are you doing something else? I'm just going to do, like, a broken house. Okay. A broken okay. house with, like, one or two characters trying to explore. But it's, like, going to be, like, from the outside of this house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I think I'm going to do like uh, the Easter, uh, because Easter's coming up, I'm going to do a bunny's house of some sort, like there, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it will be, but yeah, the outside front of a house and be sort of silly with it. Um, and then the other question for you is, what are we using tonight? If I remember correctly, you're using an iPad? Yeah, I, because I think it's fun to record the whole drawing process digitally. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and I, I don't see digital as a difficult thing like um some some people they ask me these questions a lot like to say like oh and what how do you feel about like watercolor vs digital for yeah. children's books i don't really mind i think they're all the same <laughs> they're just tools <laughs> if you can use it well you can use <laughs> another one well so you know it's basically what i what i've uh, been uh, using for probably almost like 15 years digital yeah yeah is it Procreate or is it something else that you're using? Uh, for tonight, I'm going to use Procreate, but okay. I'm not afraid of using like other um, new software as well. Yeah. Have you played with Fresco at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's one that like, like I've played with, but I've never delved too deep into it just because Procreate is easy in a way. And uh, it's it's maybe a little bit less cumbersome um, just because it doesn't have as many bells and whistles. Yeah, but, um, but I also feel like uh, uh, Procreate has some <laughs> issue, like while using it. For example, my new book, uh, my new book um, called in, uh, uh, There Was Sha There Was a Shadow uh, with yep. Enchanted Lion. Uh, the whole book was done by Procreate, but it crashed, it kept crashing because the file is too big. So, so I had to um, like, airdrop it to my computer um, again and again, trying to uh, <laughs> make things like merge together and uh, airdrop to myself again with iPad. So what, it's kind of like- generation, of What generation iPad do you have? 2018, <laughs> 2018 iPad Pro. That may be the challenge. And, and I have the same issue and this is just a, I don't know if this is true in that situation, but uh, for anybody that's listening that cares, this is this is tech stuff. But when they upgraded to the M1 chip, and now I think it's up to the M2 or the M3 chip. Um, M2. It, yeah, I think. yeah, it completely changed it. So I had an iPad where I could do only two layers for a full spread. And so I had to constantly like smash down all the layers and merge and do what you were talking about. And then I bought a new iPad. And for the same size file, same exact file, in fact, I could have 30 something layers. Yeah, but do you use the? Uh, do, uh, you bought the same gigabyte? Uh, it was uh, relatively close. It wasn't an issue of the gigabytes. It was the issue of the RAM and the issue of that chip, the processing chip. That's what was making it. Essentially, uh, uh, Apple made it so 
you could upgrade how much RAM is used by Procreate on their newer versions of the iPad. Mm -hmm. And so the mm -hmm. old, old iPads could not run something that was as uh, uh, complex. And so uh, upgrading made a huge difference. Now I don't have any issues with it. Yeah. But I also had a generation one iPad Pro. And so it was struggling from the beginning. But um, I, I have all sorts of issues with Procreate too. When you scale something and you scale it back down, like if you accidentally turn something, it can get a little blurry. There's all sorts of odds and ends, but we can get into all that. Um, so um, tonight, uh, let's let's jump in and we can just start making and talking. And I have all sorts of questions for you. Uh, yeah, the Wander Wagon says, yes, it's the RAM. That's the issue. And so you might look into that because if I, I had the same problem for years and I hated working on Procreate because of it. Um, so that might be the, the, the technical side of it. Um, so let's switch to our down shoots and we can just start talking and gabbing for the rest of the night. Sure, sure. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm new to uh, this. This is technically my second time because last <laughs> time was my first time. <laughs> yeah, I love will, Pro, but I've never done it before. So. We, we, will, we will get you up to speed. I have my feed here so I can watch and make sure stuff sets up okay. And if there's anything, I'll let you know. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> so let me, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna switch my shot down. And I will watch your feed and tell you if it gets uh, set up uh, in a way that works. How can I? Oh, 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 okay. Um, so let's see, let's watch. We get to see, there's the iPad, there's the pencil. I see it all, it looks so fancy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> This is the, uh, this is where I get, uh, I have done this enough times that I bought a rig that makes it super easy for me to set up, but I get to watch everybody else. I get to secretly watch everybody else struggle for a few minutes as they try to figure it out. And, and there's no shame, uh, in that statement of any sort. Um, so while you set up, wait, wait, oh, I saw it. Come on. I saw it. Come on. Don't let us see your password. Is it focused? Yeah, yeah, it's focused on your screen. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, don't let us see your password. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Can't believe that's the password. Why would you do such a thing and put it out there on the internet? Um. Yeah, you look that that works fine. I can see it from here and it looks hey, great. You um, see like the the my pan and then the the brushes and then everything. Yep, I see everything. Oh. Okay. That's a perfect setup right there. I will, yeah, I will try to zoom in and draw like bigger so that everyone can see what I'm doing. Okay. That's, yeah, I mean, if, if you need, make it comfortable for you to draw. Let's put it that way. I don't want you to be stretching your, uh, so you're uncomfortable the whole time of any sort. Yeah, um, I, I use this stand, uh, stand in, uh, uh, a lot. So uh, last time I tried not to use it, but uh, I think I still need it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is it, it just like angles it up for you of some sort? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, there are two brands that I think it's very good for iPad stand, um, very professional. So basically you can like, you can, they can like do a lot of heavy work. Your your, your arms yeah. can rest on it perfectly with not moving. But it's the, the, the shelf, this brand is like quite expensive um, like 40, $50, Ooh. but uh, yeah, but it's very stable. Uh, yeah. uh, but it's not uh, portable. Uh, so there is another one from Huion, um, that is much lighter. So we have both. Now, do you, do you work on the, on the iPad pretty much exclusively? Right now, yes. You, okay. And is that something like, do you, when you work with it, and this is just out of curiosity because like I, I work on mine for sketching, but I also like just sit on my sofa and work and there's no special stand to it. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you travel with it and work on it? Or is it like, is it, is it, you know, uh, mobile in your household to work on it? Or is it something that you like to have a desk and a specific setup for it? Um, I just like, I, you know, I'm a simple person. I, I actually use a lot of Photoshop still. So I use it for like a tablet. Okay. And then it's the best color tablet you can get. Like uh, this, I, I used to have uh, the Cintiq, uh, the small one, 13.3 yep. inches. 
uh, Cintiq, the old one from 2013. And I've been using that and it has a bunch of cord. It has huge cord. Yep. Um, so it's not portable um, at all. And I, I've been loving uh, using iPad as um, like a separate screen, uh, se separate screen. So I use AstroPad a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, it, is that effective for, because I, admittedly I had AstroPad when it first came out, but the problem is my iPad was so small yes. that it, I had to sit there and constantly scroll on the screen to get to where I wanted to look at, like if I needed to pick a new brush or I mm -hmm. needed to, and it became challenging, but is it, is it, and now this was, I, I don't even know how many years ago, this was at least probably like uh, eight years ago or more. I'm assuming that it's much more effective now than what it was when I first used it. Um, do you have any issues with it as a uh, an app? Yeah, a lot of issues. Okay. <laughs> okay. I even tried to subscribe the studio version. I, I've tried everything, but okay. um, I still think if you want to use uh, the computer to to deal with some files and stuff, uh, it's very effective. Okay. Like because you're not gonna use it like forever, so. Uh, if I like use it for like some image uh, editing and stuff, then it's it's fine. I use it for drawing. Yeah. Uh, it has some bugs here and there, but I kind of got used to this. But it, for you, it's not like it's not a long term solution. It's a short term. I need to solve this quick problem. Yeah, at first it was system. like a short solution, but now yeah. I I got rid of my Cintiq, so I oh. don't have anything. Um, I don't have any other solution at this point. So yeah. my iPad is very important. And also another thing is this charging cord is broken. So this charging port, <laughs> uh, I use it for um, hot, a hot bath. <laughs> like I was watching <clears throat> some a YouTube video yeah. uh, while I was taking a bath and then the steam ruined it um, oh, at the no. end of last year. So if you plug in, it has to be like at least 10 minutes of testing. And then I, it, now my iPad is not portable at all. It has to connect to the oh. computer. Uh, if it is start charging successfully, it was like 15 uh, minutes of me trying to plug in, in different kinds of angles. <laughs> so now uh, I'm waiting for the new iPad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay, yeah, when the, when the new one comes out, make your life easier and then solve it in one false, or in one uh, one expensive swoop, let's put it that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> so tell me, let, let's go back to sort of the beginning a, a little bit about sort of where you started. Um, I mean, I, I know that I asked last time, but I didn't even hear it because Instagram shut down right as I asked it, but sort of coming to go to grad school, you, you obviously had schooling and whatnot um, in China. Yeah. And then you you come stateside and you go to the master's program but before you came over was there a a real heavy uh investment in illustration or is that what the grad program was for like where did, where did all of this start uh let's go back you mean the the uh, the mica grad program no i mean just you and art making in general mm. where did that start where did your love of art come from uh, uh probably my parents <laughs> Yeah. Were were they artists or was it? Yeah, they're artists. Uh, my father is a. Uh, 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 my father and my mother they graduated from the same college I, where I graduated as China Academy of Art, so it's one of the best um, art school in China. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, they they were both like art education major during that time, and then uh. My father decided to go to Beijing to do rock band, which he succeeded, um, and then had a lot of like um, a lot of albums. Oh wait, wait, wait. Okay, so wh what kind of when you say rock, what kind of music did your dad play? A grunge. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, okay. he, he is probably the first grunge band in China. So he he has some like. Um, legendary effect but i would say very underground <laughs> like normal people who didn't listen to any rock 
music wouldn't know my dad <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but do you, does your dad have like a, a following enough that if you mention his name to the people that would be in the know would they be like oh that's your dad yeah yeah yeah. Or... a lot of the famous band in china at this moment they even have tours here in new york and they're both mostly like listen to my dad's music and then want to make rock music yeah what what was the name of the band it's you... in chinese it's called Tang Yin Yue Dui, so it's uh, the flies. The flies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if I look it up after this, will I be able to find it easily? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on Spotify, but uh, they just started doing the Spotify thing, so um, so I don't know if you can find more music. Someone okay. else like uploaded um, to to Spotify, but it's better to type like um, his Chinese name. I would say. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to ask for when we're done. I'm going to ask you to send me what I should type in so I can listen to it because yeah, that, sure. it sounds fascinating to me like uh the to one to listen to a grunge band that is not from Seattle. Uh <laughs> think about that that uh realm but to um sort of like the generational like this is what you grew up with and and I imagine that he must and and both your uh your mother and your father must have been very supportive of you in the arts just because they both came from that sort of like creative industry yeah uh, i think i'm very lucky uh because you know um my mother is a high school art teacher so okay. so i never have any like negative thoughts of like getting into art art school but like in china you know asian kids they're like very good at studying uh -huh. <laughs> so so, you know, like going to art school, consider as you're not good at starting. So this is your other solution for, for your future now. But now it's much better, I think. But still, it's, it's kind of like a stereotype uh, situation in a lot of like Asian parents' um, mind. I'm sorry, did you, it cut out for a second. No, okay. Just Can a, you hear a lot, uh, yeah, a lot of parents like your, what, I missed the last word i think yeah a, a lot of uh, 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 chinese parents they consider doing art is because you you, you cannot study well okay yeah, yeah it's kind of like a stereotype now with with uh you know having your parents having gone to that college and then uh it's being a very well-known school yeah was there a lot of pressure growing up to sort of succeed in art i or... absolutely have no pressure <laughs> really okay yeah because okay. i'm like addicted to illustration when i was yeah. um, you were gonna do it no matter what <laughs> i don't yeah. really care yeah. because yeah. i i did all my research uh when i was 15. i already did okay. research and look for schools <laughs> like i was like i don't really care what she my my my, my mother thinks <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't really have that mindset at yeah. that moment. Like I was like, oh yes, this yeah. is fun. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a done deal and no one's talking you out of it at that point. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, because now, if I'm not determined then my mom will probably give me some advice and then uh ask for some uh, other people's advice as well. For example, what kind of major will be easier to get a job, for example, like that. Yeah. Yeah, but like yeah. because I'm determined so my mom didn't really need to say anything, so which is convenient. <laughs> yeah. Now at the time, did you know illustration was a thing or was it just art making in general that was sort of- Oh, the, illustration. It was. Yeah, illustration. Right yeah. from the beginning, like at 16 or whenever you decided- Yeah, you I started doing uh, illustration when I was 15. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And then I started to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, as a professional illustration or you were just making Almost illustrations? Almost professional. And then uh, 16, I started to publish uh, illustrations on Chinese magazines. Whoa. So seeing like the, a long time <laughs> what uh the <laughs> and and that that's sort of amazing to me i mean like i i did some work when i was younger and, and before college but it was not anything i would i would chalk up to professional at this point i mean i got paid for it but there's very different mindset in my mind of of getting paid and actually doing professional work was it was it big jobs or was it sort of uh sort of beginner jobs for you at that point um, it started from beginner job, but once I got into college, it got big very fast okay. uh, because I got full time. I'm not a high school student who's busy studying, you know, yeah. so I have more time. So then from that moment, I took off 
And I signed the contract uh, with a very important uh, comic uh, company in China when I was 18. So I started publishing my first book when I was 19. So let me ask you then, with, with going to uh, MICA mm -hmm. and going and getting your grad degree, and, and this is uh, a question for those that are listening to as far as like, do you need a grad degree? Do you need these kind of things? What was the intention of going back to school? Was it for teaching? Was it for like, what was, what was was the desire to go back for grad school if you already were sort of landing work at that point? Yeah, um, I actually had a different, a different uh, like perspective on this. Okay. First of all, I'm changing the country. So yep. changing the country, applying for international school is the easiest way to change the country. Okay. You know? okay. So it's definitely like one of the easiest um, choice I have. And second, yep. I don't have a lot of money. Even though I, I earn some money, I don't ask for money from my parents, but for going abroad, it's it's still a lot of uh, yeah, money. Sense. Yeah, so uh, during that time, I, I do feel like um, I need to stop working for Chinese um, uh, audience for a little bit. I need to take a break um, because for, for earning the enough uh, tuition fee to come here, um, I burned out during the whole like junior to senior. Uh, I've been working uh, day and night. Yeah. I've been doing my coursework, but at the same time, I'm doing a lot of editorial and like magazine works, um, children's books and stuff. So it's a lot for me as a 20 year old uh, and I got very tired, but because I'm very young, so I don't know what it is. I don't know what's the burnout. It, I just, feel like I'm a machine drawing endless <laughs> and I don't love drawing anymore. I don't enjoy creating and Whoa. I start to feel like I'm a illustration factory. Do you still feel like that? Uh, I, I sometimes still feel that. Uh, okay, but this uh, I, I, I have ways to, to kind of um, avoid that at this point because I'm like more experienced. But um, during that time, I feel like uh, make it stop completely and go to another country to get another degree is going to help me because I, I believe that um, a degree is you, 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 you spent a lot of time buying two years to go back to work, uh, go, go back to creating artwork uh, with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, a, this is a great sort of hot button topic here in, in the sense of like, because I've, I've said the same thing to my students and you teach, correct? Yes, I'm uh, I'm teaching at SVA at this moment. Oh, okay. Um, ooh, I should ask you if you have some of my uh, relatives there uh, <laughs> that are interested in illustration um, that I think are in the illustration department or are going to be. Um, but uh, a good hot button topic, because I brought up to my students at certain points the idea of like, I don't know if I enjoy making artwork as much as I used to, mm -hmm. or at times it is truly a job. And, you know, it... it like once once the contract comes in or once it, especially when you're working on a book and you probably know this where like you start out on the book and it's really fun and then like halfway through you start to go oh i wish i was done with this book <laughs> and i wish i was on to the next thing mm -hmm. um those are those times where i start to look at it and i go okay this is not a um i don't want to say a hobby but this doesn't feel as fun or uh invigorating as it once did and now it starts to feel like a job like i'm actually showing up to a job i just got to get stuff mm -hmm. done um mm -hmm. you said you had ways to get around that obviously going to grad school in another country and going and like rethinking your education and whatnot is part of that but were there other tactics that you had that sort of got you past that hump of it feeling job-like constantly yeah um first of all i i would say you need to be aware like if you feel that some a lot of people they cannot tell they had it <laughs> You, you, you kind of feel like stuck and you, you feel painful, but you don't know this is like you burn out from the art. Yeah. You thought you still love it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, so, not, always, that's so, not always true. Yeah, but like, for example, like if you feel that, you, you're still drawing, but you just don't feel like you're satisfied with your drawing. Like you feel like, oh, it, it has something wrong with it. You're not excited anymore. So you feel like, oh, I'm not talented anymore. Like you, you have a lot of questions for yourself, but it, it, sometimes it's actually just burnout. Like you don't, it, you don't, you don't recognize it easily when it happens. So when, when you're working, 
um, thinking about that idea of like, yeah, it doesn't feel as pleasurable or you're burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you ever find like, for me, some of the things that like doing these Gavin doodles are actually really fun for me because there's no set agenda. Mm -hmm. It's just plain and it's, it's sort of like, this is my sketchbook and I just happen to do it online with other people. That's the way I think of it. Um, but I also think that experimentation is really important for me mm -hmm. and I don't get stuck in a rut. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like working on long projects uh, all the time is just, it starts to feel long uh, and yeah. having where I can jump around and move. Um, do you have that sort of, um, what do I want to say, like the art vacation? Yes. That, yes, that, I, I have. <laughs> and what, is, what does that entail for you? Like, what does that look like for you in the sense of, like, we all, we're watching you draw and we understand uh, that clearly drawing and, and making is part of your daily practice. But if you did it for yourself without the mm -hmm. intention of money, without having to pay bills or anything of the sort, what would be that artwork? Um, I knit. You knit? knit. Okay. Yes. Uh, prob prob uh, it used to be like growing uh, flowers and stuff, but recently it's been like knitting. What, what is it about knitting that is the, uh, like these, as much as we can talk about artwork during this, to me, sort of like the discovery of like, oh, you like to knit is probably just as exciting because it's this thing that like is outside the realm that I know. <laughs> It's, it's new to me. Like if you, if we, we could talk about procreate and all these things all day long and I'd go, Oh, I get it. I've used procreate and it's, it's part of my daily practice, but knitting is out there for me and I don't, I don't understand it. What is it? That's the draw there for you. Is there some like relationship to what you do uh, in your illustration work? Um, it's not, it's not actually. Um, it gives me confidence. For example, uh, when you're knitting a project, uh, for example, a sweater, um, if you keep doing it every night for 30 minutes, you will finish it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, like it's repetitive, but it's also Zen and you can watch some TV while doing it. Okay. I start to develop my own pattern at this point. Like I um, uh, design my own hats. I sell my hats. Uh, in another uh, secret uh, account. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, uh, and because I'm also uh, obsessed with miniature, so I make tiny heads. So I made a lot of <laughs> friends um, from the miniature uh, community. Uh, so it's now my hobby. So what, when you say, when you make a bunch of miniature hats, what, okay, you gotta, you gotta help me through this just mentally so I understand. Mm -hmm. For what purpose, if they're, if they're miniature, is it a hat that you would wear? Or is it a hat that, like, for a doll? Is it a hat that is just a funny hat because it's a hat? No, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a functional. It's functional. So I, I in this circle, uh, in this community, you sell miniature at the adult price. Mm. Okay. So, so for, for example, there are different sizes for different kinds of dolls or toys. Okay. Yes. And then all their stuff is very expensive and very difficult to get because they need to, the, the, the audience requires to purchase the same detailed level hat as adult hat. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so so I, I charge them a regular adult hat price for that. <laughs> and, and so, but it, the, the, like the idea of making it small is about like can you shrink down and make something tiny that would normally be large um it's, it's already like a hobby for for ages i would say it's not like something something very um new so the community is actually big uh, they have requirements to to purchase tiny little knittings and a lot of people are also making them so I, I just found it very interesting because I, I was in this hobby for like the miniature hobby uh, for, for, for a long time. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, I, oh, of course you said it was a secret account. Yeah. So how am I supposed to know? <laughs> but uh, it's fascinating to me that there's this whole like other world. Now is, is, does the other account have your name on it or is it truly secret? Like you don't want people to know that it's you. It's not my name on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have another like it, 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 as if it's like another me in another different field uh, talking to a different group of friends. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, and Interesting. I enjoyed it because I I know, like, uh, everyone needs some something else from your career. So if I'm only having illustration friends and I'm only talking to illustrators, it will be very boring. My life will yeah. be very boring. I want to Wait have other friends. Yeah. Wait a second. You're saying that, and then you're talking to an illustrator right now. <laughs> Are you saying? No, no, no. If it's you only have I'm just, friends. I'm, I'm just joking. Related. I'm just joking. <laughs> you just, well, I don't like talking to you either. Um, so uh, do you find any, like, okay, so let me, let me, I'm going to back up here for a second. Yeah. One of the things that I find out on these Gavin Doodles uh, with people is, you know, we can talk about art and we can talk about illustration, which is probably what a lot of people tune in mm -hmm. for. But I also think that there's these things like this that are sort of tangential that, somehow relate to or are beneficial to go into so like if we look at something like knitting are there things or skills in that that you uh not necessarily that it like is an immediate translation to illustration but if you think about like uh, my mom does cross stitch mm -hmm. which is not too i mean it's, it's different but it's still in that same mindset of she likes it because it is a bit mindless so she can watch tv and yes. do it at the same yes. time yes. and it's mm -hmm. it's about being active and it's yeah. about sort of repetition um and you know the idea of like there's a certain pattern in what you got to do and i know that knitting and and crocheting and whatnot there's a pattern to it that yes. you sort of pain are those things that also show up or are there things like that that show up in your artwork um that maybe you know doesn't inherently like look like it but somehow there is that same like reward for you when you make illustrations. Yes. Um, and uh, knit, being able to knit or hand making uh, things without thinking about illustration help me drawing, focus on my drawings again. Like okay. for example, I start to sell my products uh, and uh, I start to studying how to pack, pack the hat in a beautiful way, you know, I want to like make the box beautiful. And then uh, I got burned out from uh, selling hats for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, drawing is fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so probably this effect, like it, it does give me some um, escape room. Like, so if I'm, I'm tired of one thing, I, I got to do another. Yeah. Just like my other friends. Uh, I, I do have friends making uh, ceramics all the time. And then she was excited about it, but uh, after a while, she's like tired of it, and then she wants to go go back to drawing. You know, so I totally understand that. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Do you do you find uh, like is there challenges with maintaining your schedule when it comes to? I mean, I don't I don't want to call that a, a hobby, but doing something that is um, maybe uh, more of a a relaxing thing at points, whether it be the illustration side or whether it be the the knitting side do you feel the pull constantly for the other side of it so like you know like deadline wise or you know is there is there something always looming over your shoulder going hey you got to finish this project now yeah it's always the illustration side that makes me stress <laughs> okay and is it does does the knitting stuff have deadlines or is that more sort of self-implied deadlines yeah it has that Line, but you can finish it like for example you accept someone's order from australia and then like okay uh i'm slow knitter so you will receive your hat two months later is it okay. okay and if they're okay they're gonna pay for it and then i'll i'm just gonna take my time to to do with it it's not earning money purpose yeah it's just for me to have some projects to do gotcha. uh, and accidentally someone loved it you know so <laughs> i don't really mind the business of knitting um, and if I feel something wrong, I will stop. Okay. That's how easy it is. You can just stop for a little bit. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm trying to think if I have something that's like that far. And I, I, I mean, obviously it's a creative practice. So I'm not, I don't mean to like say it is not the same as illustration. How dare <laughs> you work on this thing? But more so like, I wonder if I have anything that is removed in a way like I do teaching and teaching for me is that you know, as a full-time teacher, et cetera, like getting in the classroom is a very nice break. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes of just being able to like focus on other people and not always having to focus on myself. Yeah. But there, I, but again, that sort of, I'm still teaching illustration. So it's like, it's relatively close. It's not like it's 
uh, wildly different, but I'm trying to think if I have anything that is that sort of like, like I would love to get into ceramics at some point. I would love to get into art making, but I wish I had something like Rose. Well, I like to build cars, but I don't <laughs> do anything of that sort. That's not my, uh, not my skill set. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could build a car, but it wouldn't work ever. That's the, <laughs> that's the difference. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. Um, with, uh, with your schedule, with sort of the illustration side, um, do you constantly have stuff on your plate or do you, do you feel like you have those moments, those breathing moments to sit back and sort of reflect at this point? Mm, you mean doing illustration? Yeah. Recently I feel great. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, like, uh, I, I want to point out something you mentioned, um, about the teaching, <laughs> okay. about the teaching. Yeah. Um, I, I always feel tired of teaching. <laughs> okay. Like you don't feel tired of teaching because, uh, it's like five years in a row that I'm, I've been talking to different five groups of kids in five years and then they graduated and then become adult. Uh, but the, um, I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that, that line of, they all, uh, you know, you're essentially getting older, but they're staying the yeah, same yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constantly. Yeah. And so I feel like I, I, I'm, I've been talking to the same kids. It feels like a different group of kids, but also the, yeah. the, the problem they are having are very similar. Mm -hmm. So I've been like uh, telling them the same thing for like four or five years. I, I get that. Is that how long you've been teaching is four or five years? Uh, more than five, actually. Okay. I started from 2017. Okay. Yeah, yeah so but not at SVA. Yeah, I was uh, at UArts for a little bit, and then I went to RISD for one semester, okay. and because I cannot deal with the commute, yeah. so so I I you switched to I switched to, to New New York City. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I've been teaching long enough that I, I understand the sentiment of like I, I've always boiled it down to I am not teaching new content ever. I mean, that, that's not true. I teach new content all the time. Like now I'm talking about AI and classes and I'm talking about, you know, new trends and things of that sort. Yeah. But what I am doing on a regular basis is dealing with new problems or challenges from student to student. Mm -hmm. And the reward or the challenge for me is not the like, hey, I get to teach you this content. It's in the delivery, mm -hmm. the content that that's where the like the fun is for me. Mm -hmm. But I understand, like, it is taxing. It is absolutely, uh, I, I wish that people could understand that that are not in education that, like, when you get home at the end of the day, even though you may be just sitting in a crit helping people through stuff, it is absolutely taxing. And, you know, it's, it's not just a physical thing. It's, it's a mental thing. By the time you get home, you're like, I don't even want to look at art. Yeah. I'm tired of, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I've also been doing it long enough that, I mean, I'm, I'm on my 20th year at this point. You yeah. got used to it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, eventually it just becomes sort of like I used to, and maybe this is, maybe this is the challenge of like, when I started out, I thought it was even more taxing because I had to learn how to teach and yeah. I had to build all my materials. And now I'm at a point where I'm refining my t materials and not having to come up with something new on a weekly basis. Mm hmm and so that's, that has been very helpful where I can just, I can rely on pre-existing things. Um, and I don't want it to sound like it, it, it truly is like, well, I'm not changing anything or I'm not adapting because that's not, that's not true in the situation, but I am definitely um, a little bit more like I can, I can walk into a classroom and not have to have stuff prepped and be able to manage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think some of that is just like comfort. It's sort of like going home in a way that you just feel like, you know, that the classroom is your, is a very safe space where you can play and, and whatnot. Um, but again, it's not for everybody. I know plenty of people that are like fabulous teachers and they burn out fairly quickly uh, with, with the content. Yeah. Um, do you, do you find it's rewarding though? I feel uh, uh, rewarding when the t the students are good. Yeah. For example, like they, they trust me. I feel like they trust me uh, because you never know what they're think, really, really think. Yeah, they, they could pre pretend maybe, but um, I, I feel like when they, when they feel safe around me 
and yeah. have a great time uh, creating, then I feel rewarding. Are, are those students on right now? I know last time you said your students tuned in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it definitely has some. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know all the names that are popping up. So, um, hello, students. Uh, if you are if if you are watching and you love Lisk as a teacher, what you need to do. I'm seeing hearts popping up right now, which is a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to go in those comments and you got to say how wonderful your teacher is because you're probably getting an A in the class yeah. uh, <laughs> as we go along. But um, are there things that, uh, you know, obviously you have built this this uh, career uh, mm -hmm. as, as time has gone. Yeah, as, okay, so JoJo in art is trying to go for an A. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. is, is vying for an A as well. Um, is there, uh, with, with you having this career in art for, for some time um, and wanting to sort of, uh, uh, you know, continue in illustration and, and make a name for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, not even make a name for yourself. Your name is already established. You're good. <laughs> um, but, uh, wanting to sort of um uh sort of expand your horizons on what you make and and like one of the things i'm always impressed with when i look at your work is just how much variety there is in your work and and the amount of work that you turn out in like you said in different markets so stuff that's for advertising stuff that's for editorial stuff that's for kid lit um and it all feels distinctly you mm -hmm. but also has mm -hmm. some like interesting uh, variables that I'm not always expecting and like, you know, are challenging or, or surprising or what have you. Do you feel like um, when, when you teach those students and you, you look at your work, do you feel like you're always sort of experimenting and, and adapting to either what they're interested in, what you're interested in? That was a long winded question. I'm sorry. That was really long. I don't, <laughs> know what, I don't even know how I started that question, but you feel like you're you're adapting let's let's start with that um i i actually feel that um and i'm also learning from my students i kind of um no want to know like what's what's trendy at this moment and and what what have you learned uh, <laughs> um there are different generations uh, i experienced for example the first generation of my students, they were still millennials, <laughs> you know, so okay. the things you're interested in, it's not invented yet in the later years. Um, and then recently it's been like very um, 2000, um, like, how do I say that? So it's like a vintage kind of vibe recently. Okay. Um, that uh, students want to uh, kind of like a Y2K style yep. with a lot of like, um, for example, girls really really into those bubbly colors. Recent recent years, I've been seeing those a lot. Um, uh, and a, a lot of students they want to get into graphic design to make their uh, own uh, product and zines. Yep. So the art art market art. Um, for example, mocha something like mocha is very um, popular for for a while. People want to be more uh, entrepreneurship instead of um, waiting uh, to get an editorial job from your Yeah, more speculative work. Yeah. I, I've noticed that too. I've noticed there's a lot of people that want to do prints and stickers yeah. and uh, surface design and things of the sort. Exactly. Without even knowing that that is a realm. Like I mentioned to students, oh, do you know about surface design? Some of them have never heard of that mm -hmm. market in particular, but they understand the concept of it. They just never heard that term. But I, I see that too all the time uh, from my students on a regular basis. Do you, mm -hmm. do you feel like it's, it's influenced your work now? Like, can you, can you point to a piece, not that you have to do it at this moment, but could you point to a piece that's in your portfolio and go, oh, this is a piece that really came from the conversations that happened in the classroom? Uh, not at this moment. I try not to get influenced by younger students um, for my artwork. Yeah, I but uh, I want to kind of have some very interesting conversation with them so that I feel uh, less stressed. And then I can able to focus on exploring my, my art. 
So recently I've been using a lot of my line works back and I feel very excited about drawing. And, and is there, um, like you, you mentioned the idea of uh, sort of a, a retro vibe or, or um, sort of pulling from that sort of early Y2K yeah. uh, aesthetic. And I see that like that for a while it was people wanting to do lots of 90s stuff. Yeah. And I hear people talking about a Y2K aesthetic, which is funny because, it, you know, for, for my age, that feels uh, ancient. Uh, <laughs> and why? And, but also, like, I lived through it in a way that's very different. It's, it would be the equivalent of me going, like, I want to do a 60s style uh, or something of the sort for some of these students that are coming up. Do you have influence stuff that you look at your work and go, like, Oh, this is the the vibe I'm trying to get. Like, do you, do you pull from a, a vintage aesthetic for your own work that shows up, um, or do you feel like you've sort of you figured it out and you don't need to reference as heavy as as maybe what some students are still? Mm, I I don't I don't reference uh, a lot. I okay. Think. But but yeah, but I still uh, look at. Um, Y2K stuff illustration at this moment. I, I, I noticed that there are so many good illustrators who are making uh, Y2K style uh, art. Yeah. And then now it's slowly, because it's not a new thing anymore. So it started to evolve to evolve to, for example, like more graphic design -y, um, more indie looking. Um, yeah. yeah, when the students stand in front of you, you know this is her work as well. Like they wear clothes like that as well yes you know <laughs> so so um i i do feel inspired, uh, inspired and everything they ask me i grew up with it for example the ccd <laughs> like those old camera old digital camera yep yep i grew up with it i started to use my very first digital camera when i was uh in the fifth, fifth grade oh man Okay, I I I have no idea how old you are, uh, and I'm not asking you to tell me, but that like that puts I don't a, mind <laughs> that puts a date, date on things for me. Okay, when 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 were you born? Um, um 1990. 1990. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to like, if you say five years old and you had a digital camera, I'm like, okay, that that uh, <laughs> that's uh, I don't think I had a digital camera until I was out of college. Um. That puts us uh, at sort of a, a different sort of range age-wise, but I imagine that it also makes it easy for you to, you know, like you mentioned, relatability to the students. I have students now that talk about memes and talk about things that they uh, they see all the time, and I have no clue what they're talking about. It just goes over my head um, because I'm at, I, I've realized I'm an old man at this point uh, in the world. It's kind of sad, um, but I still love them. But they. They say things that I don't understand and make me feel. <laughs> uh, I've realized that I've, I've become the father in the classroom, uh, where it's like I've sort of taken the place of their uh, parental unit while uh, they're at school. So let, let's go back to your sort of artistic career a little bit and sort of uh, delve into that a little bit. Um, in in the, the world of art, there is this uh, wretched wretched word called style mm -hmm. um and i say that because i i think it's a problematic word in my in my world it's a problematic world because it sort of means that you have to have everything look the exact same mm -hmm. um, but i don't know if that that's necessary for for an artist nowadays um but i'm going to use a different word i'm going to use the word voice um mm -hmm. how did you discover your voice because clearly i look at your work and i go okay this is you know your work work there's it's it's not something that's super questionable in my mind of well this could be but it it also totally isn't mm -hmm. um so how did how did you come to that was there was it a conscious decision was it something that sort of just evolved over time mm, i do feel like style is a very difficult word to to talk about because um it's your experience your journey yeah your everything your parents yep. <laughs> that made you who you are uh the environment um and then you you change a little bit every time you shift a little bit and then uh you build up uh new things on top of your old things so i don't think um i 
I discovered my style suddenly. I slowly, slowly uh, start to uh, to notice what I like to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for example, the content is one of my biggest focus. Um, I think content is part of the style. Like what you want to say is very important. Yep. Um, your voice, your your uh, the 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 characters you you designed for your character uh, for your story, they all tell uh, stories. And then uh, some of the uh, illustrations are very narrative. Some are very conceptual, but they all uh, have some metaphor that you like to use. So those are your voice, in my opinion. Like it's not only like what kind of brush you use or what kind of um, material you use. Do you use ink brush? Do you use um, a ball pen? It doesn't matter. You should be able to draw in different material and it all recognized by people easily. Yeah. So, so I'm not afraid um, of expo exploring different art materials. And then okay. today I want to add a line work. Tomorrow I want to get rid of my line work. It's fine. So let me, let me ask you a loaded question mm. then. I imagine in that experimentation in that play or that willingness to to jump and shift on on sort of a dime mm -hmm. that you've run aground a few times and hit some material or some processes or some thought you know some concept or something of the sort that just doesn't mesh with you mm -hmm. um, that you know like uh, for me one of the things that has always been very difficult is oil paint mm -hmm. never gotten oil oil paint and it's partially because I like my stuff to dry fast so I can move on to the next piece mm -hmm. right but is there something that you're like I'm pretty good at everything but this is the one thing that I'm horrible at um, and don't you dare say don't you dare say that everything <laughs> in the world uh, I don't want a liar on this Gavin dude <laughs> uh, uh, for, for real like everything I've ever tried I I've been loving it I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm I'm good at it because I I'm not the person who can judge my own work. Yeah. But I think I'm not, not bad at them, most of all. Yeah. Is there is there stuff that you're not necessarily that you're you're bad at, but stuff that you just dislike? Like um, I'm who when when it comes to making artwork, I do not like things to be super crisp. I I've said to people, uh, I don't use a ruler in my work ever. Um, because I, hmm, I don't think <laughs> what, what? I think it's the, uh, it's an interesting uh, thing you 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 you, you just yeah. Uh, yeah I thought of it I thought of it. it's it's something where in like to me I'd much rather like I'm looking at the the boards on the on the house that you're building there and you're drawing out and it's mm -hmm. like each one is unique and distinct and it doesn't have to be done with a ruler yeah. and I know that some people love that and some people want that conformity mm -hmm. and the but to me, that's sort of the death of my work, if I do that. Um, but do you like looking at other people do that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Then that's have, fine. Yeah, it's I have no so problem normal. with that. Yeah. But it's, it's just for me, it's like, ugh, I don't want to get my ruler out. Because then all of a sudden, it's, it's I'm playing by some rule that I don't want to follow. And I want to be the, the rule breaker or yeah, I understand you know, that. what have yeah. you. Um, are there certain things like that where you're like, not that you're not good at it, because I know how to use a ruler. Let me let me clarify. <laughs> I understand what a ruler is, and I understand it can make a straight line. Mm -hmm. But are there things that when you work on it, you're just like, this is not this is not for me. It's it, not that it, it's horrible, but just like it, it's something that like great you can do it, but you're not going to rely on it on a regular basis. Uh, I will. Can I say content wise? Yeah. Or... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, political illustrations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What, is there a reason why? Is it? Um, it's just less fun for me. Okay. I can still think, uh, brainstorm, and think of, um, think of uh, ideas, uh, but uh, it feels like a job while I was doing that. Okay. It's not the same feeling when I draw a house, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, for me, like one of the things I always look at now is like I want a story, mm -hmm. in in, or I want, um, and the story doesn't have to be a complex story of any sort. Mm -hmm. But I want something that says something and isn't just a like a uh, 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 placeholder or a framework for something. I want it to actually be the thing. Mm -hmm. And so like, even if I'm doing a house, more than likely by the end of the night, this will have a little story or a little narrative that goes with it just because that's the world I want to live in. 
on a regular basis. But I understand the political one is like also the the loaded imagery mm -hmm. or things like uh, I don't know about you and maybe uh, when you went to Micah, mm -hmm. did you get hit with lots of like deep philosophical debates about artwork? Uh, uh, for my program, it's actually not. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go to your program then. It's very ex experimental. Yeah. I will say. Yeah, yeah because uh, there are some uh, uh, system that's not like this. I've been, I've been experienced different ones, but uh, Michael is definitely very experimental on drawing, um, on illustration. I would say. Okay. Yeah. They support I, like three dimensional. They they think illustration should not be only drawing on two D paper. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's awesome. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. uh, the program that I went to, I'm not saying that it was a bad program of any sort, but it was definitely like, you need to have a real serious idea of what you're doing. Otherwise there's, you know, it maybe doesn't live up to all the other assignments or, or I shouldn't say assignments, but other thesis projects that people were doing. And so there was a, a bit of a narrative of like, you need to be saying something smart. And yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Like, um, I, before coming to the US, uh, in China, we never had that until I watched the movie Ghost. What's the, what's the, what's the name of the movie? Uh, the uh, uh, Ghost, Ghost Town? The, Ghost co the, the, the comic oh, book oh, that... Ghost World. Uh, Ghost World. Ghost yeah, World. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when I watched that movie, when I was in college, I understand that, oh, American people does that. Like, they, they try to make their talk articulate and they need to have a purpose and an artist statement to talk about their work. Even yeah. if it's a bad piece, they still need to talk about it. Uh, in China, it's mostly like the, the teacher still, uh, my teacher, she still does like paint up on the wall, but we don't need to have these kind of conversations. For example, you create a comic, a short story of your comic. You need to still explain your story, but it's not necessary that you need to talk about everything behind it. Yeah. You explain it clearly. Yeah, that's I mean, I think that's the challenge that I had with my program of uh, and again, it's no no problem with the people that were there. But I think it was just there was a pressure put on people to somehow like, say something smart, and yeah. not not say something that's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or that it had to be serious or be like, super evocative in some yeah. way. And now, now looking at my work, I go like, No, I just want to be silly. And like, there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. in a grad program. But I think that, you know, sometimes there's that pressure put on art students to have to like say something really bold or interesting. Or, um, or smart. <laughs> yeah, or smart. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, I'm not the brightest person in the world. Uh, I, my wife is probably upstairs nodding her head thoroughly. Mm -hmm. She listens to this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, she is, aren't you? Yeah, she's giggling um <laughs> she knows she knows uh but it's one of those things where in uh hearing that micah was maybe a little bit more uh like have fun and experiment may have been a better situation for me i don't know and i don't have uh, again i don't i went to a good grad program and i i liked it but um it's interesting to me that that there was that difference for you when you came to the states in particular when it came to sort of like that um the expectation level of uh, what you're studying or what's important to you mm -hmm. in the environment. Um, what do you, when you look at your work now, is there stuff that you go like, this is quintessentially me? Yes. Like, you know, you mentioned that line comes in and out and you said concept is sort of one of the big things for you, but is there something that like you look at and you go like, okay, only I do this. Mm, I I will say my color. Okay. In what way? Uh, um, like there's some certain color combinations that I used since I was in high school. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and if people steal it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like there were once or twice I saw someone else work, and her color palette looked exactly like one of my piece five years ago, and then I. I took the piece and then I used the tool to kind of like catch the colors yeah. from her drawings yeah. and it's my color. So this person is probably like, just like suck my colors from my digital file and to put it on her file. So the, this person's dead to you now, right? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, but but like w the second you saw it, you know. Because oh no, I I get it. Like there was a palette, especially when I was in college. Mm -hmm. There was a palette that I just never varied from. It was all this very distinct, like it was a, a rusty orange, almost like a, 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 a raw sienna on the orange side, I guess. I don't even know how to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, and like a teal, and like there were there were colors that were very distinctly me, and I still think they show up in my work. <laughs> but I can. Like the one thing I noticed in your work is you have a very rich palette. And yeah. so you, when you use like a, a, a red, you don't want like a, a pink red to show up all that often. You want like a, a like burgundy red in your work or you want these like these intense, uh, almost over, like, I don't want to say overly saturated, but saturation is, is sort of your, uh, your ballpark. And I, that's why I look at your work and I'm always like, oh yeah, okay, that's, I see the colors, I see the colors. And so that makes sense to me when you say that that was the like um, uh, uh, common uh, denominator between mm -hmm. all. Um, are, are there any other things that you look at and you go like, well, that's the other thing that I'm known for? Or do you feel a pressure to maintain that? That's another loaded question. I feel pressure to maintain that. So I change all the time so that no one can catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, you know what I I hate to say this, but I got copied so many times in China. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. Yes. So it's happened every day that now I I'm in China and then I become Lisk Phone style. <laughs> you know, I my name is already a style, so um, anyone can use it. Is it? Is it? Have you been uh, uh, AI'd at this point? Like, are you I, I think uh, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be very, very soon. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't want to look. It may be too damaging to find out. <laughs> um, I, the and I, I know that China in particular has like the, their copyright law is very different than what it is uh, mm, the U.S. It's mostly yeah, it's mostly the students or the um, like there are some some illustrators they. They they use like my style to draw advertising and they got big success. Yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you feel uh, like the equivalent of if it's a student or someone like the? Uh, I was talking to my students today about this in particular about sort of uh, students that mimic work from someone mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. and I had someone that was a, a professional that clearly referenced my work. And made something far too mm -hmm. close, close for my liking, and mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. But if I have like a teenager who tries to mimic my work, you're fine. It's much of a problem because I see it as like one. They probably don't know how copyright law works. Mm -hmm. they understand intellectual property in the same way. Yeah. They also probably don't. Um, you know, they're not out there selling it or trying to pretend like it's theirs. They're just mimicking which is what a lot of us did when we were young like yeah i like this cartoon and so i want to draw this cartoon character mm -hmm. um do you do you find that there's some sort of like threshold for you that like it's okay if someone does this but not okay if they do that i actually pretty open with that like for example if it's like a young student who just graduated and look draw looks like me i will not say anything because i know two three years later she will change yeah or even like probably six months, she will be a different person. Yeah. Like everyone studied someone else when they when they grew up. So I under, I completely understand um, that as long as you're not using it for earning big money. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it, I mean, we were talking about fan art today, in particular, yeah. like you know how it's it's not technically legal. Mm -hmm. That it's supposed to be out there. Like you can draw it on your own, but you can't sell it. Um, yeah. It's someone else's intellectual property and you can't yes. do that. Um, but at the same time, some people said what would really mean making their career or that they've made it is if someone went and did fan art of their artwork, because that means that their name is big enough that someone recognized it and said, Ooh, I think this style is so cool that I want to mimic it. And I was like, okay, that sort of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't want them out there selling it. I would be, <laughs> I would be uh, remiss if I didn't go, hey, this is mine. Don't you dare touch. Um, is there, when, when uh, 
when you had people that were mimicking your work, did it make you angry or was it disappointing or what was the sort of emotional impact? Um, at the first beginning of my career, I got very angry, but uh, now I don't feel that angry because I noticed something uh, after 10 years of in the industry. Like, for example, if someone looks a lot like you, they're doing the advertising for you. They're, they're doing what? I'm sorry, I missed the, the last bit. Like, so, so they're doing the advertising of your name. Oh, okay, I got you. And, and if you have like a strong fan base, for example, and uh, someone else posts a drawing look like you, your fans, if your fans see it, they know. Yeah. So, yeah, they go, hey, this so, is what it looks like. Yeah, you. the clients don't know, but like the, the people who saw art they, or do art, they know. If yeah. they have any, like, you know, they're like, if you you like to steal or plagiarize for all your life, then I don't say anything. But if you are a professional illustrator, you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So so I I don't need to even be angry. Like someone else will do that for me. <laughs> I'm always. Do you know why I know all these? Because other people they they sent a private message to me say oh let's look at this person look oh look at this product packaging <laughs> you know we it's, we were talking about that today in class about the like the the world of artists protecting each other and sort of saying that like writing to an artist and saying hey i saw someone's work that looked like yours just so you know so it's on your radar yeah uh and how that is like helpful one if there is some sort of like uh legal thing that needs to come out of it but also to just the the like caring for each other as artists and wanting to make sure that people aren't being abused or used in those situations is such a a good thing um do you when you get those emails what do you what do you do do you go contact the person and say too close for for my comfort or do you just kind of let it sit and go at least i know it's out there um i don't do anything now um, because, you know, uh, a lot of the things happened in China. Okay. Like, so even the people, the people, the artists who contact me uh, for helping me, they're also Chinese. Um, I know what's going on. So uh, I just wait. Like this person is not going to be like very good because uh, some of the uh, other artists, they know that this person is copying another person. Yeah. So they won't won't be friends with her or him, and then they will, you know, like it's, it's, things will happen. And, and I don't even need to do anything. There are already comments underneath the social social network of that yeah. post. Yeah. Saying, oh, oh, oh my God, this looks so much like Lisk. Like they there there will be like students or or friends, so they will do that for me. <laughs> Is there? Um, have you had? people where like you had to and the, the, we, again this is all stuff that came up in my class today that we were talking about specifically but have you had people come and say like oh this looks just like your work and you go no it doesn't <laughs> and like it, it feels like oh they really don't understand what my work looks like uh, I don't think they're like very specific ones like this but normally when when people uh, send me it looks exactly like mine. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. 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 I, uh, there's been most of the instances that I've had like that. It's been, yeah, friends that reach out and say, this looks like yours. Um, but my wife is very, very good mm -hmm. uh, about when she sees stuff like that, like letting people know in a, a nice tone, let's put it that way, that like, hey, this is probably not the best thing to do. And you might consider, uh, you know, taking the work down or um, or uh, acknowledging that you are referencing someone's work or someone you know like it looks a lot like this person you might want to say hey I was heavily influenced by this person mm -hmm. in the making of said piece uh, and most of the time it, it's met with a very positive uh, reaction let's put mm -hmm. it that way um, but yeah it depends it really depends on the artwork <laughs> really really depends on the artwork that if if the artwork looks like uh some exactly like someone else not even me like someone else then um i will probably tell that person like yeah. to, to you know be aware that this is not 
the right thing to do for your illustration. Not a, especially when it happened to a student, then I will say it directly. Well, yeah. Yeah, if, if it's a, a, I mean, I always, I use those opportunities, and I, it sounds like you do too. If like, it's an educational experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's very important if that one student is doing that after they graduate. I think we have response. Yeah. I, I think we're responsible for that as well, like for not talking about it enough. Mm. With um, with your work, um, have you had any instances of sort of finding your work, um, not just in a, a like the singular person, but like companies that have used your work? Yes, uh, and, and it's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I'm going to like let my, all my, Dog bark, you know, so like all the lawyers are go, go. <laughs> it's a different story. That's uh that makes sense. That makes sense. The uh do you do you have a team of lawyers? No. Oh, okay. But like if I can, I will find, you know, yeah. and then let like, other people to communicate. But there is a suggestion for you guys because I actually involved with a very, very big company and and then um, don't post anything online first. Once you find someone else is like uh using your work without any permission don't post this whole thing online first like try to like, oh you mean to like talk to them privately yeah first. yeah 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 gotcha yeah yeah and then if they're not cooperating or not responding then you could post it online as your last weapon yeah. but because just, once you post online you have no role to ask them to pay you oh really oh you mean like once yeah for wait, example wait. yeah for example like you you have this uh, several pieces uh and then one company use it as an advertising on iPhone and then you you don't post it and uh, and then talk to them pri under under the table and then you could ask for money hmm. yeah uh, uh for your for your rights it's the right thing to do that like you should ask them to pay you and if they pay you then you don't uh, uh, they will normally ask you to not post anything online yeah. after you got paid. Yeah. But you're, you're talking about if it's a commercial thing versus a individual. Yeah. Uh, commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Because I was thinking they're afraid, you know, they're afraid of like having their reputation ruined. So they paid me. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. I it's, thought you were, I thought you were talking about 20,000. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> give me, give me money. You used it, and uh, you owe me. Um, do you, w with uh, sort of making work, and uh, one one of the questions that came up, and and for anybody that's listening, that especially for like students or things of the sort, one of the questions that came up in my class today was, how do you feel about watermarks on your work? What, what and kind of watermarks? Oh, you mean like, like the. Oh, the copyright thing. Yeah, or like things that run across it that say their name and says like, you know, this is my work. Um, and I was talking to them about like, I don't think those are effective of any sort because nowadays you can just Photoshop those out. Um, like it's it's easy enough that I don't think that's the thing that's going to stop people. Um, but do oh my you... God, that's a, such an old thing. <laughs> what, doing a watermark? Yeah, it's like when I was in high school, I did illustration. I do that as a trend. Like yeah. everyone was doing that, like lexicon copyright, you know, oh my God. Yeah. All right, a lexicon all right to research. Yeah, and, then, <laughs> and I assume that you're, you're at the point now where it's just like you put your work up and if stuff gets flagged, you know it and people point it out to you, but um, you're not on a like, uh, or the way, that I, the way that I told the students is just someone can get rid of any of that stuff so quickly that that's not the thing that's going to stop them. There's other things that will prevent it like we were talking about the scale of image you put on your website mm -hmm. like don't put something up so big that someone can print it out uh <laughs> that's probably more important in the situation and whatnot but um with uh I, I feel like we've been talking like business and shop the whole time let's let's go back and let's talk fun um okay so you're in, you're in brooklyn is that right uh, i'm in manhattan at this moment oh you're yeah. in manhattan okay yeah so um you're you're there and you uh, you're working out of your house or are you do you have a studio? I don't have a studio. It's too expensive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
No, oh, you got to come up to New Hampshire here where everybody has an extra couple houses oh. to play in. Oh my God, that's <laughs> it's, it's, so, so luxury. <laughs> I, I, my basement, that's what I got. Uh, mm -hmm. It's fine, um, but the cat litter's down here. And so it's, it's uh, you know, it's not as glamorous as it, it looks on TV. Um, but uh, do, you, do you find that uh, you get to get out in that environment a lot or are you sort of in the house always working? I I don't like working, although I, I know I have to. So even if I'm at home, if I have any chance that's not drawing or not working, I will not do anything. I, I, I just took a spa. The spa is made of hot bath in my bathtub for two <laughs> hours before this stream. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So I want to I want to go back and I want to I want to touch base on this. So you say you don't like working. Yeah, I so, never like working. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is like <laughs> again loaded statements, loaded statements, and I don't disagree with it. Uh, but what it, meaning like you don't like having deadlines, or you don't like making art, or I don't I don't want to work twenty four seven. Okay, so so if I got any chance, then I will decide to just take a break. Okay, so so how do you maintain? being in the studio then like how do you maintain your your schedule um by, by drawing faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's purely just uh if i can get this done faster that means i can yeah like you, you just like double your speed of drawing lines like what i just said you know <laughs> and then just what do you mean about going back uh or uh, or uh having a bathtub or 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 have have to read a book in your couch you know that's that's yeah. comfortable so your reward is like a book or a bath what what yeah. are, are you like watching tv shows and stuff oh or? yes oh yes okay. i i wish my table is not my table like i wish the table in front of the tv is my t working table <laughs> so i can watch tv every day is, what are, what are you watching what's what's the what's on the uh the television um i i recently just finished a lot of like a24 movies uh, but uh the recent most recent uh tv show i finished was uh the netflix show uh called three body problem oh is that good uh, um it's it's good uh, it's i think it's <laughs> entertainment entertainment to watch yeah okay. but i like the books m much m much more okay I I've seen a lot of things about that, and I don't know. I don't know much about it beyond just that it's been getting a lot of hype. Yeah, because so. because I, the novel is so good. What the, the is original it, story is so good. So, is this the one about um, like they find three bodies at, at different times? Um, it's I. It's difficult to explain to you. Okay. You would know if you watch it. It's only eight episodes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll 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 add it to the queue. Yeah, if I tell you, then it's like spoiled, you know. Okay. It's, yeah, it's no, spoiler. Don't, do, don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, of any mm -hmm. sort. Uh, is there um, uh, is there a movie or a show that's your go-to, like your your you can return to on a regular basis? Oh my god, um, if if it's that kind of movie, then it must be all Ghibli's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And. Do you think that those influence you of any sort? Yes, um, my color. Okay, I can see that. I can yeah. see that coming. Yeah, um, um, I grew up watching them, so I can go back anytime. I also like Coraline a lot. Wait, who did Cor Coraline? Was um... the uh, Neil Neil Gaiman uh, the Neil Gaiman novel, yeah, but, but the, the animation is a uh, stop motion. I yeah, really like, like that one. I I will watch it every time. Yeah, like I was trying to think of the studio that did it, but it was Leica. That's um, uh, out in Seattle, Portland, something of the sort, Oregon, out that direction. Mm -hmm. um, do you, Is are it you a person, yeah, yeah, are you a person that can actually like watch a show and work though? Yeah. Like, wait, 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 listen to a show or watch a show? Watch, of course watch. What? <laughs> okay, so this is one of those things that like students do all the time that I don't understand, I don't get. Um, you you know it's the skill set. For example, you draw something and you pause your hand and then you you you, you kind of like look at the screen for like 
two minutes or three minutes and you look down and then keep drawing and then while doing this line you peek again so so it's been like my muscle memory i've been drawing and then i can like uh, keep my hands working and then i i look at the screen all the time that's okay that is not the way i am built uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like and i have like several monitors like for example i will have a, a stand for my iphone and i will watch something on the tv while i'm uh, texting my friends on my iphone and working <laughs> yes. you are uh you are a, a mad beast that can do things that uh are very foreign and problematic in my world i just like <laughs> i and i could watch like i could watch a movie that i've seen before I understand that because yeah. then i can look up and i'm like oh i know exactly what part this is mm -hmm. in but if it's something new, there is just no way that I can manage that of any sort. Mm -hmm. um, partially, I think just my eye is going to gravitate towards stuff on screen. And like you said, two to three minutes, but that turns into 10 minutes and then 20 minutes. Yeah. And pretty soon I'm not working. Um, but uh, is there, do you have other vices when you're in the studio or other reward systems for yourself? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> my you see my table right this is looks yeah like, kind of neat but around me they're all reward systems like i'm what? surrounded by my reward system which is for example toys um guitar pedals here and there wait do you play guitar yeah um uh, and then i like also like eyeshadows makeup and stuff and I also like uh, collecting notebooks and sketches. Um, like some of my friends, they they make like tiny little bags. I was like playing with it. Um, little little glasses for dolls. <laughs> this is uh, it's back into the miniature. I, I had yeah, like I I have all things on my table. Like I was like studying my friend's um, tiny um, sweater. <laughs> now like for me and and it's been a while because my uh my wife as much as i love her put a stop to it uh it used to be candy in my studio on a regular basis and for for me rather than look at that little it just popped up on my screen the little miniature of their uh outfit um the the thing was candy in the sense of uh if i finish a spread mm -hmm. well then i get a little you know a couple pieces of candy or if I get this next little thing done, I can have a, a little piece of candy. And it became that sort of um, sort of go-to for me uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but I, I can understand like toys and things <laughs> uh, are, are your reward. Um, don't get into the candy business that, that makes you a, a much uh, bigger person over time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think reading and um... Uh, knitting and video games are my reward. Like yeah. if you, you, you talk about um, the real rewarding, like I will look forward to uh, like watch a new movie or play some video games after work, you know, and have some me time with my partner. You know, it's very important to spend some time with other people instead of like just working. What, uh, what video games are you playing? Um, for example, I still play Animal Crossing nowadays. I've been 2000 hours in and I'm, I'm, I've been playing this game since I was really young. Yeah. So, so I, I like all sorts of games like, like this, this, this game and, uh, Splatoon, <laughs> a lot I, of Splatoon. Since we're talking about Splatoon, what is Splatoon? Like, what is the concept of that game? <laughs> Oh, it's so cool. You will love it. Do you like feeling colors? Do you like, uh, do, do you feel like very satisfied uh, uh, pouring ink to a room? Okay. And then make it full? For example, you love purple and you want to paint the room purple. Okay. Yeah. yeah so this you game would... is you, you, you're like two teams, they're competing. One is, for example, blue. Another team is, for example, pink. And you all have sorts of like gums and stuff that paints ink. So you're just like painting the floor. And then who paints the most uh, wings? So, you know, uh, when, when the game just started, from the both sides, you, you start painting. And but like when the two 
teams meet in the middle. That's the fun part to start. So it's like <laughs> if a person paints a wall blue, you come in and paint it red after. Yeah, and then you, you want to kill that person so that uh, this person will be exploded and into your own, uh, like, into your own color. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love, like, how, how exciting. It, I mean, I understand that there's, there's value to it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not disparaging. Uh, the 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 value of the game because I hear students talk about it all the time. But yeah, the artwork your, is so good. Your, your the art, the music, initial pitch of do you like or do you want to? What was it that you said? Do you want to something colors? And it just caught me off guard as such a funny like way to explain uh, the game. Do, do you want to make colors? Uh, every <laughs> that was that you said, but it was so good. Um, <laughs> do, do you? Uh, what what system are you playing on? Oh, I have everything. I have PS5, PS4, and Switch. And I also have, still have Sims on my computer. Oh, oh It's okay. the best game in the whole world, in my opinion. No offense. Sims is awesome. So, do you... Okay, so here's a, here's a question for you that this is sort of going back to art a little bit, in a way. Um, <laughs> And not, not that we can, we can stay on video games all day. I have no problem with that. But if we want to do something that was sort of, um, again, relating back to art, uh, when you are uh, playing games, mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I enjoy playing video games is it's sort of just a mindless task or it's, a, again, getting out of the thought or having my brain work. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have to work in certain games. Yeah but there's a different shift that happens in my brain. And I know there's a lot of students that like to play games like uh, role-playing games and, or you call them like Animal Crossing, mm -hmm. where it's, it's, they get to live a life that is not theirs Yeah. in a way. Um, is that some of the, the reward for you? And is that something that also shows up in your artwork? Like, oh, do you look, you know, like the equivalent of the house that you're drawing right now, mm -hmm. are you looking at it going like, oh man, that would be fun for that to be my house. And this is what it would be like to live in it, mm -hmm. or is it purely just here's a house? I I I dream. I I if I want to draw something beautiful, I have to have a goosebumps over it, or I want to own it. So uh, this kind of house is my obsession when I was a kid. When I was a kid, like I I really like. American ugly countryside, like houses designs. I don't know. Like a lot of people consider them as not pretty, but yeah. I I think because they look all the same, all, like very similar, <laughs> especially like those like um, farm houses. I don't know what. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. very simple design that they all look. I think they're fascinating. <laughs> is it is it fascinating because it was something that you potentially didn't grow up with, or is it fascinating for a different level? Because of Sims. Uh Oh, because of the Sims. Okay. Yes. okay. Like I, 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 I think uh, like the the game is like very fake. The first generation is very very fake design, but I like that fake. So I I got into dolls. I got into like doll houses, all because of Sims when I was young. I I it, it, it was my first video game. So I I think uh, almost eight years ago I did one drawing almost nine years ago i did one illustration it was like a green piece square uh like a whole family was li living in their backyard okay. under the sun and then and that piece was based on sims interesting uh, yes this is your this is your, your fandom that, that you live in uh i'm trying to think if there's like if there's anything that i love as much as it sounds like you love the sims uh, it's not I like the game, but it's I like the tiny little things inside this tiny little world that looks very Americanized <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. So I get I get the like the small things. Like I hear that over and over. What is it about the small things that's fun? And I'm not challenging you in the way of like how dare you think small things are fun, <laughs> but more so like what is it about them that is rewarding to you? Mm -hmm. I. I don't know, actually. I I actually have some uh, of the best 
people's work. This is a tiny doll from a Korean artist. Like these little things, I can stare at them, uh, st stare at them for for a long time, for a long time. I don't know why I like them. I just every time I saw something like that, I want to get it. I I I, I want to become friends with the creator. <laughs> it's it's. I mean, I'm I'm trying to think, like. I guess I have something that's maybe a little similar in that I really love folk art. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out, like, like in my own brain, is there something about it that, like, like the equivalent of you know liking little things? You can almost trace it back to like, oh, Sims. That's yeah. that's the thing that sort of you know either started that or there's a relationship there. And I'm trying to think of like, is there some relationship to folk stuff that like maybe like old things? I just like old things. Maybe I'm just an old person uh, <laughs> i like vintage uh, miniatures as well yeah so so it, it's i feel like it's uh, no explanation it's it's just happened when you saw it you kind of know like this is something you really interested in yeah then go for it you um do you, you have doll houses of course <laughs> oh okay okay now <laughs> you make your doll houses I tried to make it, but I ended up making little clothes. Okay. Yes. So with the dollhouses, you just buy the pieces then that my friend, that you need. My friend made it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. Um, and now here's here's a weird question, and this is me trying to figure out how like how your brain works. Um, <laughs> right now, it does not seem like it works. No. Um, it. Do you play with the dolls? Yes. Okay, what do you what what do you play? I, I took professional photos. Oh, man, you live in this whole world that is just so strange to me. Cause like, yeah, I, when I say like play with the dolls, I'm thinking like, well, okay, you know, like Susie's gonna marry Bobby. And... No, no, it's not yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a very professional hobby. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We even have a big events, so a lot of people they will come from all the world to sell their uh, own creations. And then um, I was there holding my toys with my own taste of clothes. Um, people recognize my doll from my Instagram. Interesting, okay. So I'm not listening there. But you're not gonna tell us what your name or your secret name is. You're, <laughs> you're gonna keep that, that mask on. Yeah, is it, I, I like is, that, yeah, I like is that. It like Mary? Like you go by like some like dude's name, some like my name's Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> I I think uh, I think I use a fruit name at oh. first, but uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is a fruity name. Yeah. Wait a second, are you Apple? No, just uh, like like I know it all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are now. Um, I saw that thing you posted last week. Uh, <laughs> now. Uh, going back to sort of, it's funny because I keep saying going back to art stuff and then we like talk about these other uh, sort of uh, ventures into uh, who you are. Um, is there work, because you, you mentioned uh, that you've done editorial, you've done advertising, you've done kid lit, etc. Um, is there one of those in particular that sort of like you feel like is your bread and butter or the thing that is the most rewarding for you, even though I know you don't like to make work, <laughs> you'd rather be in a bath. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what is there? Is there one of those that you're like, oh, if it had, a, if I had to pick, this is the one. Um, I will say short and rich. Yes. So maybe uh, some of the advertising jobs will give me a um, big reward, but it really is painful. Yeah. Advertising overall is painful, so I yeah. wouldn't say that. Um, children's book painful process. Uh, so why, why is it? <laughs> Is it painful? Uh, long, long time. Okay, so just the is and and if we, I, I, it's funny because I feel like I should really just get into therapy because I feel like this is all therapy <laughs> questions. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about your history and why. That, I'm like, why do you like small things? Where did that come? From? Um, what is it? Is it the longevity of the project? Is it the the having to draw the same thing over and over? What? Um, it's mostly the process of uh, making the project finished is a lot of effort okay. and time consuming. And that was scared me before I start um, the project. 
give me a lot of like uh, mental pressures. Like I will, I will think about this project and cannot fall asleep, you know, because I scared. I got scared of uh, thinking about, oh, I need to finish a huge book in several days, in, 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 in several months. So I, I, I think I will never get used to the pace of children's book. <laughs> Are you happy with the results? Yes. Uh, the reason I kept doing it is because every time I, I have the actual book in my hand, I feel very satisfied. Okay. Yeah. I do, do feel the, the emotional, uh, like the feeling of like having your baby born after so many months, you know, of pregnancy and then yeah. you have your born, your baby born in your hand warm and you just like feel like, Oh, this is this is all worth it. Yeah. And then I, I will definitely want to do it again. And then the, it's another loop. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You have kids? No, I don't have kids. Okay. <laughs> so you, you're not even speaking from experience. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> like, babies are the best. And then like, yeah, let's you have a baby. And then all of a sudden, let's see what happens. You may not be <laughs> so highly about them then when they're throwing up and pooping their pants. Um, <laughs> Is there, uh, when you get those books back mm -hmm. uh, and you, you know, have it in your hand, obviously there's like a reward, yeah. but are you the person like me wherein you immediately start looking for mistakes? Yes. Uh, so, you know, because I understand my personality so well, I make sure there is zilch mistakes before I send it out or send it to the, to the factory, the, the printing factory. Yeah. But do you, do you ever get it back though still where you're like, well, that was, you know, this, this wasn't exactly what I wanted or um, is it, it always like pretty spot on? Uh, for the, the later books, it's spot on. Yeah. 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 For my first Everest, for example, I noticed some uh, issues here and there only myself know, but I'm still very satisfied with the, with the result. Yeah. So the second uh, book, I even add more details because I noticed the size of the book is relatively very big so you need to kind of like draw bigger and more details so that you you are able to to print just right okay That's all these needs like a lot of uh, time to i will say need experience with the same publisher yeah yeah, yeah. and then do, do you work to scale or do you work i mean when you say you have to draw bigger are you are you scaling up the things on the page or is it you're actually working at a bigger scale bigger, like bigger scale. surface yeah. what was that i'm sorry B bigger scale yeah okay i i mean i've always always i was always working big and then having to um slim down the work in the finished product and mm -hmm. then i always find out that like oh i put all this effort into an element that doesn't even show and you know, like, or, or like the equivalent of, I like a lot of texture in my work mm -hmm. and I'll put all the texture in and then it comes back and I go, Oh, none of that texture actually showed up in the finished product because of, you know, the printing process or whatever it may be. Um, and then I, the next book in that series or whatever, I'm like, okay, I don't have to go as big or there's, you know, this little workaround that will make my life easier. Um, have you, uh, have you gotten a book? back or like in the process because i assume you got stuff like f and g's and things of the sort mm -hmm. yeah uh, i i have a little bit but uh i think every time right now i have experience uh, to solve a lot of my issue before i say yes to like before i say yes to the whole whole thing like for example like um they're printing issues color issues yeah. paper issues i will solve it as much as i could so that yeah. i in my brain my brain told me that you worked really hard on fixing this whole thing at this moment so there aren't anything you can't uh, you can do further furthermore so you have to stop yeah so so and then, then i will feel like oh at least i do whatever i can so okay, it's, makes... it's the best i can do for this book at this moment so I will force myself to stop thinking about the flaws and then just to celebrate. Um, do you, do you, with, with the books, have you gone out and done any sort of like school visits or anything of the sort? Or is um, it? You I mean, mean events? Yeah. Things like, like, you know, book readings or yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some. Yeah, there are some. Yeah. Mm. And are those uh, challenging? Yes, for, for you. For me, it's challenging. In, in what way? Uh, I'm not good at dealing with kids. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that that whole speech about them being warm and cuddly, uh, <laughs> just out the window. Um, do you uh, when, when you did those? Was it with a a like you alone, or was the author there, or how were those sort of set up? Uh, there, there was one time I had to draw for kids. Oh, like, like I have to teach kids to draw something. And yeah. that was my very first event. I did a book with Abram, and then I got scared because no one listened. Like the kids are on the like out of control. Yeah. They're like screaming and yelling, and their parents are drawing for them. You know, I was like, "Oh my god, this but, is in, where, impossible." Was it at a school or was was it at a like a a bookstore? Oh, okay. That's that's where. Yeah, okay. Because I was gonna say, when you do it at a school, the teachers are there generally going like, "Okay, everybody, quiet." <laughs> or if you're gonna ask a question, make sure it's a question and not just a statement. Uh, and so there's a little bit more control. But yeah, bookstores can be wild it's a chaos yeah. yeah so i i'm not i don't hate kids i just feel like i'm not good at um uh, dealing with them because they don't listen to me even my little brother i have a brother who's nine and he and he doesn't he shows up to those and just yells and screams and runs around it's not but uh, he yells and screams in front of me as well <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah so mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, you know, yeah. you know. Uh, whenever you 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 go to the zoo and you saw the monkeys and the monkey saw you and got excited as soon as they see you, yeah. And then they're they're like jumping and screaming and then uh, cannot control. Even their parents can cannot control them. That kind of thing. Yeah, my my brother is like you 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 push the button, and then he got hyped, and then he will talk twelve hours nonstop. Yeah. Is, is is your brother listening to this right now? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. 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 He's he's cute. It's just like you know, it's a, a lot. It's a, it's a lot. Age thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's a. I mean, my 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 son. I went to a a book event recently, um, to read uh the most recent book that I, that came out, and um my son was up the entire time walking behind me in the bookstore as I was reading to people. And he had, I had brought uh, lollipops uh, or, or little like suckers or whatnot that were sort of related subject wise to the book. And he was just sitting there eating that, just walking back and forth the entire time. <laughs> and, you know, uh, there, there were parents there and they totally got it. And I was just like, hey bud, can you sit down? And he would for a second and then pretty soon he'd pop back up and he'd be walking around and I, you know, I'm so used to doing that kind of thing now, or like that that's not that wild of an idea. Um, but I know that like, it's very hard for him to potentially control all of his energy or mm -hmm. to still for, you know, an hour plus that he wants to move around just because of his age. Um, and he's only a year older than your brother <laughs> at this point. So it's not like it's, it's that far mm -hmm. off. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you get opportunities to, see like obviously bookstores is, mm -hmm. is in a sense but with the rest of your work do you get opportunities to see people's reaction to it uh, you mean like other places that i can show show my work and yeah, like, talk to people stuff do you ever like yes yes a lot like um yes uh, for, for example i i did some events for uh, adobe and also uh, live drawing events um uh conference and uh, I did talks with Apple, so so it's on the, the like the app, big Apple store uh, in in New York, one of the biggest one, and then they have events. Um, ask uh, the professional artists to do presentations. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that almost my whole career. <laughs> I say before COVID, it was a lot, and then right now I feel like it's cooling down a lot because of the. A COVID situation. Yeah. yeah. Now, are those scary? I don't feel that, that scary. I got excited. But it's the kids that are the. Yeah, the... because it's 
uh, not controllable. Okay. Okay. Sometimes. Yeah. They, <laughs> adults sit still. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, with, with getting out there and, and doing those sort of events and talking about your work, do you ever get embarrassed or like, I mean, obviously like there's nerves mm -hmm. and things of that sort that show up and, and wreak their, uh, their rear their ugly head there you go that's what i was looking to say um but are, are you someone that gets embarrassed in front of a large crowd or is it just like nervous i got excited excited okay yeah i got uh, nervous and excited so i i just want to want to share like i i think i have this this uh specialty since i was really young i'm not afraid of um, public speaking oh good Okay. Yeah, and you know, it's weird that I my English got much better every time I I do public speaking. I don't even prepare. I just go and and start talking. Yeah. Very excited. Versus now, I I I don't use my half my my brain because I'm half drawing, half talking. <laughs> well, that's that's the teacher in you. That's the that's the like. I I've gotten to the point where like I'm doing stuff and I'm thinking and planning and making marks that I want to make. Um, but I can also talk and hold a conversation. And when I go do those talks too, I am not the person that's going to get out a little like index card with what I need to say to my audience. And it becomes much over more of a like uh, improv or yes. a sort of play of communication with them. Um, have you ever made any major mistakes though when you're out talking? Oh. Uh... Like or slides that you had that were supposed to be presenting uh, didn't work or the power went out or like what's what's the worst that you've seen last time I'm with you <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. 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 yeah I don't think I experienced like major like thing things like that luckily <laughs> I, I wish I don't need to experience that yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think if I've had, I keep worrying that when I do kid events that I will accidentally swear. And I'm pretty good about oh, yes. swearing on the regular now. Like w once we had our son, it, it was, you know, it got toned down quite a bit. Um, but I still have that fear that I'm just going to accidentally let something slip and I'm gonna hear lots of shocks of, yes, uh, I, I I pay attention even talking to you today. Oh, do you normally swear like, like a sailor? No, I, like you, you sometimes will will do that naturally. Right. <laughs> not not those like very heavy words, but you know like small things, like <laughs> oh oh shit, you know like this, it, does it consider as a as a swear? Yeah, I, I mean I think that is a light, swear. <laughs> but a it's, light it's, swear. Yeah, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world yeah. i think for a, being in front of a bunch of little kids that would be a nightmare <laughs> of of you would uh you would not be invited back in that <laughs> um, but i i do have that fear that that's going to accidentally happen someday and then i'll i'll i won't know what to do um mm -hmm. i'm also someone who like says the wrong thing uh to people uh or or sort of shoot my shoot my own foot i put my foot in my mouth what's the i don't know what the phrase is i'm looking for um because i don't plan stuff out like this year i ha i just found out last week i have to be the the faculty speaker at graduation mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. and so i have to do a speech in front of the you know all the seniors and their family and and whatnot uh and they ask you to write down your speech ahead of time uh oh, so, they, so they can document it and whatnot um but i know that i'm gonna totally go off script and I'm probably gonna say something that's really dumb or uh, there was a time where at graduation, I had a student come up uh, and I had to introduce them and, and sort of, cause they were winning an award. And I said, this student um, was, uh, you know, is a really great student, I'm proud of them. But when they started out, they were really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and what I was trying to say was like, they've come a long ways, but I didn't need to say they were really bad at the beginning but of course i again I, I i ruined it all and the student came up and i was like did i just throw you under the bus by accident i don't even know what i said and they're like yep i uh, think it's funny yeah. i i i don't i will not mind it if you're my teacher <laughs> <laughs> i 
I, well, see, I think I have that rapport with the students, but I think it's the family. Uh, <laughs> uh, in that situation. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you go to the graduations and whatnot for the students? Um, no, because I'm just an adjunct. <laughs> you can still go, can't you? Don't say I think you need to be invited, right? I don't know. Like, oh. I wish I can go. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to call up SVA after this. <laughs> they need to invite their, their, an honored guest uh, to show up and, and have a good time, because that's not fair. Uh, it's, it's, it can be a little boring at times, I'll tell you that much, <laughs> especially 20, 20 years of them. They don't get that different uh, over time. Uh, is there, are there things in your career that you're like, uh, I want to do A, B, or C before I uh, retire or I call it quits? Like, are there, are there like aspirational goals that you have at this point? I, I think uh, for my illustration goal, I mostly like conquered it. Um, like, for example, I want to have my children's book. Yep. I want to have my own book and then I, I think I had it. So uh, right now my goal is to just, um, like I want to feel happy about drawing more instead of just working as a muscle memory yeah. illustrator. Yeah. Are there, are there um, things like when, when you say that, like you want to be happy, are there certain things that you right now can look at and go like, this is the thing that would make you happy? Yes. Like as, as like yes. a, a specific medium. Um, or whatnot. Yes. Um, right now, like all the recent personal works make me happy. And and personal works meaning like just stuff for you or stuff for galleries or? Um, like mostly just for, my, for me. Yeah. Do they, like, they see the light? Like do you put them up on Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, some people like I'm going to make work for me and it's going to be for me and I'm not going to show it to anybody. Um, I like to share because uh, for editorial I don't want to post sometimes okay yeah uh, is there do you have a secret stash of work sitting in your house right now or in your apartment or what have you that is uh, the duds the things that didn't work yes of some sort <laughs> and is it a a, a big collection or is it a small collection uh, i think it's small collection <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. and and what what is something like how would you define what gets put in that pile versus what gets on your instagram or in your portfolio or what have you what's I, the, what's marker i do it based on like for example I, if i like it or not okay yes. well, is there um but like I understand that that sentiment of like if you like it or not, but is there something that like you're looking for? Like for me, it's always like one is the story. Two, does it have something different than everything else that I've done? And then like you know, you know, the equivalent of like today I'm playing around with sort of uh, odd shapes and and sort of blocks of color. And mm -hmm. I don't do that all the time. And I do stuff that's similar, but I don't do stuff like this all the time. And so it becomes that is the thing that I'm trying to achieve with this. Um, mm -hmm. Are there things that you, uh, and so like, if I can accomplish something that is new in that manner and I can say, oh, I've definitely uh, done what I wanted to achieve with this, then it can go in my portfolio. But if it doesn't add to the conversation or if it somehow is repetitive, then it probably won't show up. Mm -hmm. uh, are there certain things like that that you sort of look at and you go, it has to solve this specific problem in order to see the light of day? Um, wow, this is a very difficult question. <laughs> um, I will say it, for most of my time, I, I still feel like uh, I, I need to like this piece. Even if this is a very commercial piece that yeah. uh, fulfilled some functions, if I don't like it, I, post, I don't post it. Okay. Yeah, so even if it's like for for big clients, I, I decide not to post it, then it's going to be in the dustbin. <laughs> yeah. I did that uh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have, a, I have a two trash cans here that are overflowing with uh, mistakes. <laughs> and uh, uh, 
uh, or or I, I don't do a, a lot of mistakes because I love I actually love mistakes in my work, and so I, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that they're they're problems, but they're things that like uh, you know literally something got glued in the wrong spot or uh, a doodle just didn't work out the way that I wanted it to, and that's different than like oh this little this little corner here is a little funky. Um, mm. Or is there a, a, um, I don't want to put it. Is there works like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Things that. Oh, okay. Sure. I can show you. See. Oh yeah. Let me see the bad stuff. Let me see the bad stuff. <laughs> like... Let's see the the clunkers. I don't. I don't know. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me show you all the clunkers in my work, and then you just can't find a single thing. Uh huh. Uh -huh, slip. Like gotcha. Something like these, maybe. I don't know. Like a lot of the old uh, editorial pieces I yeah. did. Yeah. You... I know it's for money. It's five minutes work, but I know I know they're not very bad, but they're not good. Wait, did you just say five minutes? No, like it's just a metaphor, but like oh, you okay. Know. <laughs> yeah. Because I know you're fast, but if you're if you're doing this at five minutes, then. Uh... You need to teach us your ways because I, I need to learn how to do it that fast in order to uh, make the money I want to make. Um, are there, uh, are there, one of the questions that came up today in class that I thought was a really nice sort of uh, sentiment was, uh, it was, it was from a book uh, that said, thou shall not use uh, financial uh, gains as the yardstick for success or failure. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously people need to live off of money, mm -hmm. but like, you're going to have to have some element of that, but is there, are there things that when you, um, uh, that like are rewarding for you on a spiritual or a, uh, uh, sort of holistic level mm -hmm. that are not finance. Like for me, having a little kid read my book or giggle during a reading is, is lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or the teaching side, like being able to show someone or talk to someone about here's what I've done in my career and this is how it's helped me. And I hope that it will help you. Yeah. Those are super rewarding for, for me. Are there things like that, that sort of like jump out to you that are like, Oh, this is just as valuable to you as the paycheck. Yeah. Tomorrow, uh, uh, yesterday. Oh uh, no. Yeah. This afternoon. Oh my God. What I was... <laughs> this afternoon, there is a student talking to me and then she said like, uh, she felt lucky to, to come to the SBA grad program because she met me. Oh, and it made me feel, feel very happy <laughs> and did you feel the same <laughs> you're glad they came or was it was it a one-sided uh i think it, this time is two-sided okay I, i've been experienced like one-sided okay once if, yeah if that person's watching right now uh, <laughs> that's that's uh you have to say that it was two-sided because they might be they might be in on the speed watching what we're saying the whole time yeah for sure uh, I, I never um like talk anything like the f complain anything about this student like i sometimes will talk uh, about uh, some of my students uh, with my partner and stuff but for this student i've never okay uh, complain or any say anything i always like compliment her i have uh after 20 years there's some students that i i will not talk about the student in front of them or their friends but i've had some <laughs> students that I've, I've definitely talked to my wife about saying, ooh, this is a, this is a rough one. Uh, <laughs> the semester has been a challenge or what have you. Um, is there, a, uh, obviously I mentioned the idea of like goals and things that uh, you want to work on, but uh, are there, um, are there legacy things for you in the sense of when you're done and you've, uh, you left your mark on illustration, which you already have, obviously. But is there something that is like, like for me, having a book that uh, wins some major awards would be awesome. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not the sole thing that I, I need to happen. But that definitely would that won't hurt. Um, but are there are there things that sort of uh, you would love to like when you when you retire and you're talking to your family and you're going, hey, I remember back in the day, and then <laughs> we remember. Remember that? <laughs> that we hear about it all the time. Um, do you have any of those moments that you're looking for? 
um i i think for my mom for example like i i already um, my existence already become that um so she's a proud mom um so uh, i i i'm very satisfied with what i did um with her money <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, like anything, anything could be her legacy. But for me, um, I don't want that uh, kind of uh, award. For example, I, I don't care about the award that much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be when I was a student or just graduate, I, I'm a very hungry person. I want to impress the whole world that I can do things. But right now, I, I, I feel very zen. I I feel satisfied uh, while I can do a beautiful drawing. So my goal changed. I I think if you feel that way, the book you produced might be your best book. So I think my new book is my best book. Yeah. Enchanted Lion was Enchanted Lion. It's my best book, but um, I I I do feel like I I want less from the book. So I produ kind of produced the best book. <laughs> wait, what do you, wait, what do you mean you wanted less from the book? It's all, what, what? almost like a um, Buddhism kind of saying that, oh. for example, you think less, yeah. you, gotcha. you, your ego is smaller with the project, and then you got more from, like, for example, you want to earn money and your drawing will look like you want to earn money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like... That like that. Um, so you want to become very famous, your drawing will, will show that to the audience as well. Yeah. Um, but if you don't want that and you, you like more into what you're creating, then the audience will feel that too. And then it will probably make you famous or earn you more money or earn you more friendship. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I got you now. I, <laughs> I was like, I mean, you did less and then but it's it's you didn't you didn't make it as like it was not the success of that was not the the make the or break for the yes. yeah gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha got um uh, you mentioned uh you're a hungry artist mm -hmm. uh now i know what you meant by that i'm 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 going to boil it down into other terms but <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the, like, it's not that you're literally just you're in need of food um but let's shift gears food what what are your what are your go tos? You mentioned I think that on Thursday you said like you ordered in food. Yeah. And I don't remember what it was, but you ordered in some food. Yes. What food you ordered in? Uh, I forgot about it already. <laughs> <laughs> it's several days ago. I don't remember what, what I ordered. Okay. So what is your what is your favorite? Like you're you're down in New York. You got to have some options there. Yeah. Maybe more options than what we got here. Um. um I really enjoy Vietnamese, Thai food, Chinese food. Yes, all like Asian food. I I love. Is there um, a specific like dish that is the go to for you? <laughs> it's funny. I talk about Asian food, my, but my favorite dish is pasta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why why pasta? Um, it's just like a good pasta reminds me of Chinese noodles. So why, if, why not? If it, uh, okay. <laughs> Why not Chinese noodles? <laughs> um, because I I'm not a Chinese noodle person. Um, but I like the uh, thick paste of uh some of the Italian pasta. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. Like handmade, uh, very thick. There are some noodles from China I really like like that as well. The Xi'an uh, style noodles, very thick, very dry. I like that. <laughs> okay. That makes my, which is like, it felt like contradictory, but now I understand. They <laughs> the, have some the... similarities. Are you, are you a good uh, chef? I, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. so. Would your partner say that you're a good chef? <laughs> yeah, she, but he, he is a, he, he is even better. Okay. Now, uh, do you, okay, here's a, here's a question. Wait, someone says, uh, <laughs> Which brush are you using? I, oh. I, I think a couple of people say that as we went along. Um, you... This is the the original one from uh, from uh, the Procreate is it, is Sketch it the and B Darwin. Hmm? Is it the 6B pencil? No, I don't like the 6B ones. I like the Darwin uh, one. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. 
I was gonna say, so many people love that 6B pencil that I just assumed it was. I know. Shot. I know. Um, but it's still easy to use. It's just I personally um, like to to draw something like that. Like, yeah. I do that a lot. I, I I I'm not shy to to talk about tools because I think it's there. <laughs> you know, I I I didn't invent this brush. It's Darwin in Procreate. <laughs> Is uh? Do you make your own brushes at all? It's uh, uh when I was in Photoshop, yes, but uh, not uh, Procreate yet. What, I will. What? I think I will want to uh, develop that. I I never understood the brush making thing, and it's not to say that like I don't get why people do it. It's I just can't wrap my head around the process to make them. Um, yeah, I'm it's sure okay. That, yeah. I'm sure that <laughs> that would be amazing uh, if I like, or I would have a real vision for them at some point. But I just, so many people make so many good brushes at this point that I just like, I have no need to go to the trouble of trying to find uh, or to to learn that process. I can spend my time on other things mm -hmm. and let ILT Webster do it for me, uh, or yeah. you know. Just, just ask Kyle about uh, no Kyle Webster to do more, and you buy. Yeah, well, I mean Kyle uh, does pretty amazing stuff in general when it comes to brushes, but there are so many other like I'm I am a huge fan of the uh, Max Pack mm -hmm. brush, and I'm trying to think. I feel like there's some other ones that are out there, but the Max Pack ones I always love. Um, especially the watercolor ones are amazing, even though I don't do watercolor looking stuff. I do think that those brushes are, are pretty stellar. Um, are, is there, uh, um, uh, are, are you someone that jumps around from brush to brush in Procreate or do you pretty much stay with the same? Oh, jump to jump. I, I never stick to one because, but I will use them similarly. So that's why I'm saying like uh, the brush is not that important unless you, you don't know how to draw. If you you kind of understand the way you draw, you kind of want to, you you will find the the perfect brush, uh, because you will use them as if they're your your um real pencil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all the brushes that I like are things that feel. Uh, I I don't like brushes that feel, uh, digital. Mm, all but they're, the... they're all digital. Well, I know they're, they're all <laughs> digital, but what I mean like. I like a raw edge in my brush and I like something mm -hmm. so like those, those pencil type brushes are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards. Uh, so you, and, you, you mean you like more textured? Yeah. Uh, brush. yeah. And so things that sort of um, don't come across as a, a finished um, uh, sort of a, a clean version. Like I'm not, as much as I love vector art, I am not someone who wants my work to look vectory. Mm -hmm. of any sort and so any mm -hmm. brush that, that starts to venture into that territory of being too smooth or like the blend uh is, or you know gradients are too smooth in the work uh i i veer away from that in general i understand that yeah because uh i used to draw like that because we don't have a lot of choice for for digital but brushes but now it's now there's everything under the, the sun yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, if you want to find a pencil brush, there are so many. So, I think it's a good word at this moment. Um, are there, are there uh, um, uh, other things that you you like? You, are you someone who uses lots of textures and overlays, or are you pretty much drawing straight? Uh, I I can do both. Yeah, I I do whatever I want. <laughs> Like just uh, it, uh, for example, like it, it really depends on what kind of drawings I'm I decide to do at this moment. Like what kind of um, the the style I I want to do today. Yeah, is there? So uh, if it's like a more print making style, then I it will be a, a more overlay drawing. Mm. And and here's here's a, a sort of again a, a bit of a loaded question, but you mentioned early on mm -hmm. that you work fast. Yes. Uh, Working fast allows you to get to those things that you really want to do. Yes. How did you speed up? <laughs> I, I, I know it's, it's, it's a challenging question in the sense of like, how did you do this magical thing? But was there like lots of practice? Was it something like, I always think if I want to speed up with the work, I need to figure out what I can sacrifice 
not necessarily that I'm getting rid of uh, amazing elements out of it, but more so um, like, do I need to worry about every little detail or can I get rid of, can I not pay attention to some areas and just let the piece happen? Mm -hmm. um, are there, did you make sacrifices? Was it practice and just, you had to get your hand faster? Was it, um, you know, like what, what happened in order to, for you to be faster? Uh, I think I invent new ways of drawing sometimes. Um, this is actually, I, I talk to my students, like a lot of the students, they spend weeks on one drawing. And in real life, it's very difficult to do that if you want to do editorial. Yep. So uh, my suggestion is to invent something new so that you can handle. Uh, it looks smarter and simple. So yep. for me, my everyone has a different solution. Even if I tell you, uh, no one can copy me because everyone's uh, feelings are different. Someone use lines as a very slow, you know, solution. But for me, lines are the fastest solution. Well, I, do you know, you must know the work of Juhi Yoon. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at Juhi Yoon, when they started out, they were doing all sorts of printmaking stuff when they were in college. Yeah. And then they got out and they were like, how am I going to do this as a, you know, freelance editorial illustrator? And they were trying to set up a dark room in their house, you know, in a closet so they could make all their screens or do all these fancy printing methods. And then it really just became, they can just use a, a digital process or they could do it with just graphite and overlays. Mm -hmm. it, and it was like, how do I speed it up in a way where I can actually get those jobs done? Uh, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's like, you know, it seems like a no brainer to sort of go through that process or to get to that point. But, I know that it was a, a struggle at the beginning of their career to, to sort of figure out that process. Yes. Um, do you, when you look at your work, do you, uh, do you sort of partition it in your head in a way of like, this is the good stuff, this is the okay stuff, this is the somewhat okay stuff, and this is the, the stuff that I'd rather not look at again? Or is it partitioned in a like, well, this is the stuff I'm doing today. Here's the stuff I did yesterday. Um, like how, how do you define what goes in your portfolio beyond, beyond the aspect of you like it? Um, is there an age limit? Is there a, um, uh, it has to be the top 10% that makes it on your site? How do, how do you define what, what actually gets seen in that um. sense? I, I feel like um, I, I actually don't know. Like I, I don't know if I will judge my drawing. So for example, if I like some drawings of mine, I will want to post it immediately. And if I, I don't feel that day, uh, that bunch of drawings will will be all all be gone. <laughs> so I don't really know how to define a, a drawing of myself right after I finish it. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult for me to um, give them a definition uh, during like uh, in a short amount of time. Sometimes I think I did a bad job, but I, after like two months, I, I come back to this piece and then it was like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I, I want to give them all a chance. Is there, um, is your partner in art of any sort? Yeah. Wait, what do they do? Ill illustration. They they are. Wait, what's their name? Uh, Jun Sen. Oh. Okay. Is there competition? Uh, uh, no, we complement each other. <laughs> I now, are you saying that you're listening right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're they're a really good cook too, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like you, you know what? Like I I think love based on uh, a lot of my my relationship based on like you know um, I I look up to his work. For example, um, if he's a illustrator, I need to like his work before we're getting to a relationship. <laughs> or it would be very difficult for me to compliment yes. him. <laughs> you know, it's like fake. <laughs> Do you, do you, so this is going back to teaching for a second. Do you have students uh, or have you had, I'm not saying do you have them right now, but have you had students in the past wherein uh, they're, they're in a relationship and 
it's clear that they're, uh, you know, one is maybe better suited for it than the other, and you're worried about their, their longevity? Hey, I don't really care about their personal, um, like, uh, uh, relationship that much. I do saw something like that, but I don't, I don't really. Yeah, you got to come teach at a small school like mine. You're going to, you're going to, I mean, how many? <laughs> How many students are there? Do you know how many students are at SVA? I don't remember. Like several, couple of hundreds. <laughs> okay. From my knowledge, it was somewhere, it was like somewhere in the like thousand something or other, you know, like small thousands mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or something in that range. The school that I'm at is 250, mm -hmm. something like that. Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> You find, that's not going to happen in SBA. <laughs> yeah, you find out all the dirt. And so you're part of it, whether you want to be part of it or not. And some of it's lovely because like everybody knows each other and it really is like a tight knit community, but you also find out all the dirt and maybe you don't want to know all the dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put in a bunch of eggs. I'm going to draw a bunch of windows and make a bunch of eggs in this thing. In how can you see your drawing? Uh, see my drawing? Wait, what? How can you see my drawing? Oh, you mean while I'm shooting? Yeah. The thing? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Have, um, there's someone that's following this uh, feed tonight that's called Mark Hoffman's Biggest Fan. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. That's also me. <laughs> and we just set up a separate Instagram account oh. that I watch on iPad. So I see it. it. The only downside is I see it with a 10 second delay. So like, you know, I can see like, oh, you brought in at one point you brought in those little small dolls yeah little, like there's your dolls you were talking about them and i had to wait about eight seconds before it actually showed up oh and so that's interesting there, there's yeah. a play that i have to deal with but i get to watch the comments and i get to watch what people are saying and who shows up and uh now do i look up at it at all times and actually pay attention to it not as much as i should um but that's how I'm able to sort of keep track of what's going on and see what you're working on. Like right now I'm seeing you, you just scaled down the tree and scaled it back up. Uh, but I'm sure you're at a different point already by that. And so that's why when people show stuff, I'm always like, hold on a second. Or I have to literally get up and look into my phone because that's where I can see the, like the actual correct feed mm -hmm. for what's going on. Um, but, but I need to have a better setup honestly than that. Um, but that's the, that's the way it's been operating for some time. I have a very stupid question for streamers okay. uh, so like you. Like, do you have any profit from this, uh, uh, like, uh, like streaming every day, you know, or every week? Uh, no. So it's like, a, uh, uh, like you just do it every week. So uh, Instagram is not going to pay you anything. I'm just curious. Uh, out of curiosity. What, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I have had at, mm -hmm. is I have had... Um, I've done some sort of live stuff where uh, I've gotten like companies have said, Hey, do you want to be like, do you want us to send your, you our stuff and then you can review it, that kind of stuff. And most of the time it's not ones that I want to deal with. And then uh, the big one that I've had, and this is my claim to fame at this point, uh, preparation. Do you know what preparation H is? You may not be nope. old enough. <laughs> <No. laughs> <Wait. laughs> Have you ever heard of uh, what hemorrhoids are? Hemorrhoids? Well, no, I don't know. Oh, okay. After this event, uh, go look up what hemorrhoids are. Um, <laughs> my wife's upstairs mm -hmm. laughing. Uh, hemorrhoids are uh, a problem with your butt. Uh, it's oh, a. It's... Oh, oh, yes, I know. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh oh. You know. Uh oh. Now you, yes, yes. you revealed too much. You don't want to tell us your secret name on Instagram, but you just told us that you know what hemorrhoids are. Um, <laughs> I, I I did a thing that was instead. You know about Inktober? Yes. I do one that's called Stinktober. <laughs> and it's all it's all potty humor. Um, and I did one one time uh, where I made some some jokes, and I my wife had uh, in the end tagged um, Preparation H. Uh, mm -hmm. comments and they liked it and they uh, sent me some some free stuff <laughs> that is somewhere around our house we have a uh, uh, <laughs> yeah someone says lol maybe no google photos yeah don't don't google uh, images let's put it that way but um, 
they sent me some free stuff and that's about as much swag as i've gotten but in the process i did get a cool fanny pack from them that has butts all over it uh and they promoted me on their site and things of the sort but i do this out of the sheer kindness of my heart to those that want to have something to listen to or to want to learn about kid lit or whatever all of that is uh that's the reason why i do it not for now if i could get wealth out of it awesome let's do it uh but that's not the that's not the intended goal mm -hmm. i see it as a, I, I've realized over time that my my career is not to be the famous artist. Mm -hmm. My career is, or the the reward that I have now is being an educator. And mm -hmm. to me, that's where I, I this is the fun side of it. Is like how much can I share with people and really um, uh, talk about art making and and life and. The fact that uh, you hate making art, but you sure love baths. All of that is, uh, you know, <laughs> that's the reason I do this. I mean, w would you ever do live stuff like this on your own? I think if I have a chance, yes. I would like to talk to um, like strangers, uh, fans that's online supporting my work, you yeah. know. Uh, be liking all of them, but I, I've never seen them. So it's it's gonna be something that I think I want to try in the future. I mean, I saw last time when, when the the whole thing shut down and the um, uh, what do I want to say? Instagram was problematic. I saw you yeah. go after the fact, and you had I mean, you were showing sketchbooks and things of the sort. And I know yes. that people out there like, yeah, it may not be. Uh, drawing, but like, I'm sure there are people that tuned into that that were like, oh, good, we get to see these because I've always wondered what they look like or, <laughs> or trying to figure it out. That's the whole, that's the whole thing for me is just, can I, can I help one person? Um, and then on top of that, I get to talk to a bunch of people that are my heroes or people that I, I look up to in some way. So having you on here, you know, you're in that list of like, we love your work and we wanted we wanted to get to know you and so this is that opportunity of just even if it's not um super like uh we're learning every step you draw and how you draw it's really <laughs> really about just getting to know you as a person and it's mm -hmm. stu i mean it really does sound sort of stupid in the sense of like how cheesy is that that i'm like oh, i got to meet you and talk to you but i've met so many people in kid lit through this that I never would have had the opportunity to meet in person. Cause there's no, mm -hmm. hell I'm going down to that evil New York city <laughs> where we're only the worst people on the planet live. Um, you know, they, with the, with the Yankees, <laughs> and we have Sock nation up here. No way am I going down there. No, um, it's, it's just an opportunity to get out and reach people. And it, it started during the pandemic for me mm -hmm. and that's it. It's, it's, I wish there was a reward, but, that was a long-winded answer. Wow. Mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> but I think I, I appreciate it. It's a very important uh, question for, for me to know. The answer is very important because I, I, I now um, see you very differently. Like I, I think um, it's a very volunteered kind of yeah. um, thing. And uh, with people like you who want to like talk to more artists and then and try to help young uh, artists that's like priceless it's i mean that's why i and, and as much as i want it to be just about art like literally learning about those things of like so there i do ask questions like mm -hmm. where did you start and why do you do this that's always how i start those but i think people want to hear like okay if you if you don't want to make art what are those things that you want to do and mm -hmm. like finding out that you have this whole world of miniature <laughs> clothes and and outfits and whatnot that you love like there's someone out there that's going like i i don't know if this is of value to me as an artist and should i stop doing this and like i feel like there's always someone's gonna have that and then i also get lots of questions of people popping in the comments going you know what brush is that uh what material are you using hey what's it like when you talk to a publisher with a b or c you know concern do they do they get back at you um all those things can be answered in the process as well um are there are, are there things that like 
Uh, and I, I don't want it to sound like I'm like, oh, look at me, I'm a saint because I'm doing, <laughs> that's not what this is of any sort. Um, but mm -hmm. also the thing that this does for me, and I don't know if this is something that would be beneficial for you, is this is the one opportunity where I feel like I can just play. Mm -hmm. Like, Is this piece for anything? Not really. This is just for fun. Um, and I don't ever post online me working live on actual contract work because I can't really. Mm -hmm. You know, like they say, like, you shouldn't show too much of the book, so I don't show any. And so this is a chance to just make and try things. Yeah. I don't know. You should, you should get yourself like a, a little camera set up and just every once in a while, like hop on and just go, Hey everybody, here's what I'm doing today. <laughs> How many people, I mean, you, have, there's a ton of people right now. There's 45, 44 people tuning in. They're all going, I want to know what Lisk has to say. And then I just yammer on for about 10 minutes <laughs> instead uh, about this is why I'm important. Um, <laughs> is there, uh, do you do any volunteer work or anything? Um, I don't know. Like I, I feel like the teaching part involves a lot of volunteer stuff, a job already. Yeah. So, so I don't, right now I don't have a lot of like, uh, time for doing extra. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, um, one of, one of the, like, I imagine, especially with you coming over from China to the U.S., that mm -hmm. even when you were going through your grad program, I bet you there was a lot of um, uh, challenge as being a new student in the U.S. trying to figure out your way in this messed up country yes. of ours. Yes. Yeah. And it's, the biggest thing is called a visa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Getting around mm -hmm. that stuff. Oh, man. Visas are the... Or a nightmare. I'm a, um, almost a half lawyer now. Yeah, seriously. like I can answer lots of questions. A bunch of <laughs> a bunch of the hiring things that we've done recently. There's been lots of questions about sort of like, uh, can we sponsor people for teaching, and if we can't, what do we do? And it's it's visas are a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, yes. so, I mean, all most of the time, I'm like they're like they have a visa already. They spend a lot of money on it. But they just realize they can't work in the school they want to work yep. with. Yeah. Yep. It's mostly happened with the O visa. It's a it's all government red tape. Yeah. And it's I mean, I know there's probably some reason for it, but I I'm not privy to it. Um but I think I I've done with my, my line work. <laughs> are you did you uh, wait you like okay, so here's a question for you. Uh -huh. How do you make fun? What would you say? How do you make it, fun? How do you, do I done? I, 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 I think, do you ask that? Yeah. How do you know you're done? Um, how do you know when to stop? That's the question. When I feel like I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you dumb that down for me? Cause that was too, too complicated of an answer. <laughs> uh, what, um, what like for example, finished? Yeah, for, for example, like this is just a line work. I feel that I'm, I'm finished with the line work, but I, I still need to do some colors. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But I do feel like the, I spend a lot of time on the trees and I spend a lot, a lot of time on the towels. Uh, it's been like around like two hours and I think I need one more hour for coloring or 30 minutes for coloring and I'm done with the work. Gotcha. Right. How when is this the way that you normally work on on most of your work in the sense of um, sort of doing the pencils coming back and working on color for like thirty minutes at the end? Uh, no, no. <laughs> just how you're doing. It's just for this piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. For 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 this piece. Gotcha. Okay. I'm. Uh, I feel like you, I always think that I'm a fast artist, but um, all the detail that you put in that thing is pretty intense. Wait, I'm see now. You just. Now I'm getting caught up, like just watching what you do, instead of like trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the, This is why TVs are bad for me. This is because I'm getting caught up <laughs> what you're doing and not paying attention how I'm cutting something with a knife, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to cut an egg. That's my. If I can get that cut out, okay. Um, hold on a second. I have to pay attention as I'm doing this so I don't cut myself. 
Um, I, are you someone that ever works traditionally still, or is it primarily all digital at this point? Uh, for my work, most of my works are digital because I think it's easier for me to fix things. Okay. But ha do you still do any sort of um, traditional work at all? Yes. And do you try to mimic your digital work or does your digital work try to mimic your traditional stuff or do you see them as two separate entities? I see them as two separate things, but they all, they also belong yeah. to each other yeah. because, um, you know, the mimic work is very, the, the word you, you use for, for this is very difficult for me to explain it for, uh, so, so for example, let me, let me explain again. So, so mimic this word, uh, it means like this brush is copying a real pencil yeah. or this watercolor brush is mimicking the watercolor, but actually digital has its own style. So no matter if it's a digital watercolor or a digital pencil, it has its own beautifulness as well. You don't, you, I, I, I try not to see one piece as if it's a digital or non-digital i never separate them like that yeah that it's it's about content or it's about i, I get that sentiment too like i uh the best pieces are pieces where i'm not caught up in the material mm -hmm. and also do you know why for example there is a quartet um in the like in the place like there's a four person they they're playing yeah. violin and stuff you know uh, these two uh, these four people they have four instruments so when you're using a synthesizer you you have this one machine but you can make 100 layer of harmony this they, is the, they, they're just two different solutions this, for drawing this is your dad, dad showing up right now you know that right <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, so you know like it's it's matter like for example if you want a human to show up a little bit or you want to hide behind the machine yeah that's what i'm what what i'm thinking about i'm, I'm still thinking about this uh, this issue but right now for example ai is like definitely men try to hide underneath the machine do you are you, are you worried about ai at all i used to but now i'm not afraid what what were you afraid of and what how'd you get past that because i know there's a lot of people that are scared by it Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, I actually talk to a lot of my friends who owns like uh, video games companies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the video game industry is more, I wouldn't say the curse of the word, but you know what I'm going to, you, 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 you know, it's like kind of like blah, 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 up, you know, <laughs> like it's really, really bad at this moment. Like I, I talked to some of my um, friends. She, she is like uh, working in a very core um, team of a very famous uh, game company so yeah. she's okay she's not gonna be fired but uh, uh, because they're famous so they kind of like outsource a lot of the repetitive work to smaller companies those smaller companies are issues yeah that, that... With, uh, like because the boss a lot of the issue is with the boss the boss imagined the ai can replace all his workers his his uh, concept artist, so he fired like he fired a bunch of uh, those concept artists, and then he he imagined because they already bought AI, so they have uh, this very powerful tool can replace people. So in the end, you know what's the result? Uh, a smaller group of people trying to fix AI's problem. So, so AI has six fingers, then they, they change it to five fingers. So it, instead of um, the machine working for human, it now becomes human working for the machine. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. I haven't, I haven't heard that sort of twist on it, but I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's very cruel for, because the boss now believes that he can draw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very, very confident and like trying to um, like fire people and then because he believed that he spent a lot of money to to build up the AI system, so you need to use it, you know. Um, but it's actually very difficult for the concept artists. There are some team members who worked for this person for more than 10 years.
Yeah, they're they're now. They're all like, they're all gone. And then I I I find the the most horrifying thing for me is when the boss are firing people. He has no remorse. He's very excited about firing them, because because he thinks the technology is helping him saving money. And then this, I, this is a Pandora box. If it's opened, it's opened. It's never gonna close. So even if we are wor worried, it, we are not gonna stop them because the benefit is so obvious that people are saving money for this. Do you do you find um, like one of, one of the things that I was talking with students today is. Uh, there are threats to any industry as time goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we look back, yeah, five, camera. <laughs> five, so it was NFTs. Yeah, uh, NFTs yeah. gone. I think it sort of disappeared. And when I was going through school, and maybe this is a little bit before your time, but stock art, mm -hmm. the the thing that was like going to be the death of illustration and digital illustration coming in was going to be the death of illustration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or you know, the death of, of people working traditionally and whatnot. And it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a feeling that AI is going to run that same course because you're seeing art directors actually saying we're not going to accept any um, any AI art. And you're seeing competitions and things saying, hey, you can't have AI art in this or, or anything that's derived even in the ideation stage from, uh, from AI art. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think that long term, it is going to die down. Will it ever go away? No, it's never going to go away. There's, there's no... I don't think it's going to die down. You don't think it's going to die down at all? I don't think it's going to die down because it's very different from NFT. Be you know what? Because um, I ask my, my concept art friends and stuff. The bigger companies, they already use AI as, as a helpful tool oh. at this moment. No, I agree in that sense. Like AI mm -hmm. is going to be around and it's going to be used in a way. But I think that as a freelancer, mm -hmm it's going to have, have as much longevity because the industry itself sort of is rebelling back against it mm -hmm. uh, or people are wise to the fact like any company Wacom got in some hot water recently um, because they used AI art for uh, an ad campaign and mm -hmm. they had to very quickly back up and say oh, oh we didn't know it was AI art um, and to me that's one of the worst cases because they're built around like it's a company that makes materials for artists to make art. You would think they'd mm -hmm. be wiser to it. But um, one of the things that sort of um, has recently come out was uh, United Airlines has a magazine called Hemispheres. Yes. Uh, that they had a piece that was uh, credited as uh, courtesy of OpenAI something or other. Uh, and they got a lot of flack. Uh, and mm -hmm. They're they're at a point now where I'm sure they're like their art directors or anybody that's working is going uh oh we can't do that again mm -hmm. it's going to cost us uh, clientele or people are going to you know be angry about it um, and I imagine that that in turn over time will build up to a point wherein um, you know they're going to be shying away from anything like that because it will come with a controversy mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true 100 percent or not I don't know if that's like a steadfast rule that's going to be around forever um but i have a feeling that is going to play a major part in the sort of evolution of ai so it will still be here i mean we use mm -hmm. it all the time using a blending brush is ai using mm -hmm. uh, you know all of that is ai but something that's generative art like that i think there's going to be all sorts of like challenges uh, not just for the individual but for companies to make sure they don't sort of cross a threshold mm -hmm. but, um it's such a touchy, I have, I have a, at school tomorrow, we're having a big, what we call a hot topics uh, event where we're actually discussing what does AI mean for uh, an art school tomorrow. And, and it'll be interesting to see what everybody's um, opinions are mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah, I feel like it's a very, still very difficult topic, but it's evolving so fast that you cannot control it anymore. Yeah. Like I, I still think although there will be loss, I think it it will definitely be loss, uh, be loss to control this. But it's not gonna stop people from using it. Yep. It's gonna develop and it's gonna replace some people. So, I I think um, we have to focus on on our work as well. Yeah. Like for example, like how can you be unique enough to separate from the AI work uh, work 
or I don't want I for for example for me I don't want to see AI as a comp uh, competition. Yeah. I just want to focus on what I like to do, and then people who like my work will like my work because this. Conversation is very similar to digital, uh, 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 for example, Kindle uh, is going to replace um, reg regular books. Do you remember like the digitalized uh, book uh, purchase experience will replace all like uh, actual bookstore? Yep. It actually has some influence, but now they're kind of like into this mode that is like kind of balanced, not complete balanced, but they are sort of balanced out. Yep. And I I, I think that's what I'm saying when it comes to like that NFT or like it's going to die down in the sense of it's still going to be around, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to be the competition that people see it as because people are going to go, oh, I want original stuff eventually. Just like NFTs, yeah. like NFTs are still around. People still, you still get those emails all the time. Can I, I buy your artwork NFT? Mm -hmm. And of course it's scams and whatnot, but um, it's, it's my, my impression is that as long as you make work that is unique to you and that you that's good pleasure to work with mm -hmm. then you should be okay yeah so. um yeah and then for ai i think it's it's um it's gonna be continual hot but uh i don't think people will see it as a replacement of a real artist yeah although some people some artists will use it as a tool to lure money for example, they can post online and say, this is my drawing, but it's actually Meet Journey's drawing. It ha actually happened in China once. Um, and it, it got very like interesting because it's like a printmaking person uh, uh, used AI to make some printmaking and then uh, he sell, sell them for a lot of money. So, so it, 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 like a lot of people who, who bought these, they don't know they are AI. Yeah. If it's, if so it had this conversation that people want to refund and stuff, you know, so I, I've been looking at this because it's, it's a very a brand new um, event happened on Chinese social network. Um, They're kind of like popular and then they, they, they did this. Uh, they use AI to create all their work. Oh, well, I also imagine that like, you know, for, for you and I, we've also mm -hmm. established ourselves enough that people, you know, people in our situation and i'm not saying that we're both like completely safe but that we have had enough of a career yes that, yeah, we are lucky <laughs> yeah I, we we got ahead of it in a way but there's a lot of students yeah. coming out who are gonna go uh oh i'm not sure how i'm gonna manage this going forward um but i do think that if people just focus like you said focus on making good work then they should be okay if they're worried and always trying to bend to the market and trying to meet some demand that's not naturally who they are or is somehow um putting their work as and and the quality of their work as uh, on the back burner mm -hmm. always going to fight or are always going to be in that battle in a way with uh ai and it probably is a losing battle of some sense um I, yeah. I I totally understand your concern, um, but I also feel like um, like we're also part of it. Although we're you said we're we're safe, but we're also part of it. You know why? Because a lot of the people who hire new people from college, uh, if you know how to train AI, you're you're much easier to find a job. Yeah. So I assume that one day. AI training or AI uh, teaching will, will, will come to um, college level education, undergrad it, level. It's, a, it's already there. Not for our school, I think. What? I still think it's not for our school at this moment, but for other schools, it's already started. It, it, it is in some art schools really? in some of the art schools. RISD has some policies now where they're letting students apply with AI art. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's policy mm -hmm. saying you have to document it and you have to say why or that, that you made it with that, but it's showing its its head both there and in classrooms where people want to teach it. I mean, the school that I'm teaching at, there are people who are actively trying to teach AI in the mm -hmm. class. Um, and I'm not dead set against it. Of I'm any not sort. against 
test it as well because it depends on how you use yeah. it. For example, uh, one of my friends, uh, he's doing, he's at Micah, he's like doing uh, AI generated uh, photos. So, so for example, he took a photo of something and then he used AI to make a random object out of this, this, of uh, this photo he took yeah. or his old uh, work, the AI generated and he copied the, 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 the uh, sculpture in, in 3D. He, he made this sculpture out of an AI creation, the AI creation based on his own work. So it's kind of like you play with AI and then uh, it's kind of like a, a interesting challenge. Yeah. I, I same for me it's it's i don't have a problem with ai as a thing mm -hmm. i we're getting into like some some uh heady topic here uh <laughs> i don't we at one point we were talking about silly stuff um i don't have a problem with ai as a concept mm -hmm. um when it comes to intellectual property mm -hmm. that, but if you can yeah the, find a yeah find a way to make ai be truly using your own property mm -hmm. have at it have your fun i'm not going to do it that's not what I want to do, but I know there's plenty of people that wouldn't mind playing in that realm. Um, mm -hmm. I think it boils down to right now. I don't know how it's used or why the, the box, you know, the, the little black box pumps out what it does. And so until I know how that works, I have challenges in mind of, of is it okay or not? Uh, mm -hmm. But as a concept, no, everybody uses AI at this point, whether they know it or not. Is yeah. it everything we do? I mean, making a word document when it underlines your word because you misspelled it that's ai <laughs> yeah and grammarly so, is ai what? grammarly is ai yeah i mean there, there's there's so many yeah things I, I we've been using it for a long time you know <laughs> it's a matter of just just like is it someone's property mm -hmm. and we can figure out a way to manage it there then i i i'm a lot less worried yeah uh, and also the copyright made me uncomfortable you know what do you mean what do you mean by that uh, like people throw, throw your work in the feet to feet AI to train AI, oh, yeah. I feel uncomfortable. Yeah, mm. I'm a, I, I wish there was a way because I know there's ways to bow out of it. Mm -hmm. and get yourself you can take yourself off lists and whatnot. I wish there was a way to, to actually opt into it instead. Mm -hmm. So you're not having to find instances where your stuff has been used, but rather allow them to use it when you want to. I mm -hmm. wish there was that option, but I know that's not always feasible um, in all in all situations so mm -hmm. um see i'm trying to figure out i want to put a slide in here of like i don't even know can you even see what i'm doing because you're you're looking down and your camera's yeah. above right yeah i can i can like kind of like uh, half stand and then see your see your drawing okay. it's very cute i'm trying to figure so fun i want to figure out a, like a slide or some i was going to put in some like some ladders and weird stairs and stuff that that get from one section to another in here but i'm trying to figure out how i want to do them and that's the chance <laughs> you're fast, fast as well i'm see? fast but i'm not as fast as you you got me beat hands down in all of the uh the speed factor um i thought i uh, today i i do do slower i i kind of like uh uh draw the draw the line work very slowly today <laughs> This is, you're slowing it down so we can actually see it. And it's not just a blur the entire time. <laughs> uh, this is, no, my, my, I'm, I'm pretty fast in general, but this is not as, uh, it, it generally for me to, to make a solid piece, I'm talking about four hours, somewhere in that range, which is not too far off from what you're doing. But I also think your level of finish is higher than my level of finish. My, my level of finish can be a little scrappy in the, uh, cause I like those mistakes and your work is always like crisp and clean uh mm -hmm. and and wonderful um let's put it that way uh are there uh are there artists that you look at right now that you're like these are my my heroes mm, i look less uh look at less illustrators recently but i i do have uh, some of my favorite illustrators all the time can you can you name a few for people to like understand who you're actually looking at uh for for example, I, I still enjoy John McNaught, uh, uh comics. Okay. Yeah, and then I I love Rutu Modern comics. Carson Ellis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I like everyone. <laughs> is there um, 
is there anybody that's like really out there that no one would know but you're like they der they deserve a lot of uh a lot of looks oh uh let me think there are so many some of my favorite illustrators that disappear like they stop making or stop posting so like g give me an example though mm -hmm. I need to dig out my books, bookshelves a little bit. Like I, I collect a lot of zines. So there are some like old things I really enjoy, but uh, you can't find them anymore. Like for example, um, um, let me dig. Yeah, I, I also like big names, <laughs> like uh, Tatsuro Kiyoshi, Peng Zhu, uh, uh, Jiren Tamaki, like I still love them. <laughs> Is there, um, are, are there, uh, what do I want to say, how do I put this, are most of the people that you're looking at in a certain industry? Uh, yes. I love, I recently really liking this Korean uh, illustrator, but I don't know how to pronounce his name, unfortunately. Oh, oh. Yeah, so I collect almost all this artist's um, little zines. It's, uh, his name is Lee, Lee Hyung Hee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I collect almost all the little, little zines done by him. Are you, are you getting them all online or where are you, where are you collecting these? Where are you getting the zines from? Um, online. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you have bookstores and stuff that you haunt where you are? Uh, uh I went to normal, <laughs> normal bookstores like um, McNally Jackson and Strand, <laughs> still. But I also uh, enjoy um, my printed matters a lot. Strand to is look at. Yeah, nor I mean, Strand is a a big bookstore. Yeah. But yeah. not, it is not a like, from my at least from my knowledge, is not a um, uh, like big chain. I know. Is it? Uh, it's not, but it's a family business for for hundred years. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's been around for a long time. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that one for sure. Uh, I'm uh, is there? Do you have a big book collection, like a big art book collection in general? Oh yeah. I, I wish I can show you. It's all above my head. How many books? What are we talking? What's I that? think I have, we have, um, oh, I've never done the, but like maybe three, four hundred books at least. And are they all uh, art books or are they primarily like, like do you have a lot of kid lit or is it I, lots of I, artsy fartsy stuff? Um, I. I I sometimes like novels and stuff and po uh, poems, uh, literature. Really enjoy reading like the, for example, the Liars Club, the the Haunting of the Hill House, mm. <laughs> Shirley Jackson. Like I need to have it on my bookshelf, you know. Uh, and a lot of Asian uh, novel writers I really like. Uh, three body uh, three body problems are also like Chinese writer. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Margaret. Um, some of Margaret's books, and uh, I secretly uh, love Jane Austen since I was young, <laughs> so I have a whole set of uh, Jane Austen there, uh, and Doris Lessing, uh, and Virginia Woolf, of course. Yes, I ha I have a lot of uh, books above my head at this moment. Oh, and I love Stephen King. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How often do you get? To to read uh, whenever I have extra time in the bath or in bed whenever whenever you get that work done you're you're right to your books yeah or or, or watching some TV and uh, read some my favorite books yeah I like thriller though I I I like to read like popcorn and thrillers as a fun, but I wouldn't get the book. I wouldn't buy the book, the physical copy. I will, I would just like download them on, on my phone or like uh, buy them digitally. 
because the covers are sometimes not very pretty. <laughs> Oh, so you're one, you're one of those cover snobs. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, as much as a, a book can be, especially because I primarily read kid lit at this point. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't read a lot. I, I read the news. That's my adult stuff. Yeah. Um, but for kid lit, it has to look pretty. Yes. Otherwise, I am not picking up the book. And I don't care if it's the most wonderful story in the world. Um, if it has a, an aesthetic that I don't like, that is a very big turnoff uh, for me for for reading. Uh, said oh book. yeah, I, I totally understand what you're talking and about. I, I feel bad though because I I do feel like you know I'm I'm missing out on some really stellar stories, mm -hmm. but it, visually I would get so caught up in like oh why did they make this decision why why does this look so bad and uh, I would just I, I would have a hard time separating myself from that sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. that breakdown so um, will you buy a digital copy for just reading that part or oh uh, i i buy, buy the books i don't I, but, the only digital copies of books that i've ever oh you mean like and that's uh we we will do like some some audio books here and there but uh i just don't buy books that are uh that are ugly in general <laughs> <laughs> like I'm yeah there are some like very very good books but the covers are very ugly yeah what do you do if, if, you just don't read them yeah uh, if, if I get a book most of the time I'm getting a actual book mm. uh, I just I the digital reading has always been sort of challenging for me in general of a, a process yeah. and I can't use my phone I have to use a Kindle yeah. like I have to use another like device to read only books so so I'm okay with digital. Yeah, I, I like having the physical copy. Mm, I, I understand that. I understand. It's, it feels good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get away from that yeah. as a uh, as a thing. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, anytime that I'm uh, in a bookstore, uh, we buy too many books, and we uh, I, at the end of the year when I do all my taxes, like right now, I total up how many uh, how many books that we bought, and it's it's an excessive amount. Uh, mm -hmm. I always feel bad about it uh, in some sense of like, wow, I really just spent my child's uh, college education. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's also a lot of space taken, like all the books are so heavy. <laughs> like I, I, I moved two years ago. It was a disaster. <laughs> oh, just because of how much. Yeah. There are so I, I do have a, 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 a lot of books that are, um, uh, down in basements and whatnot that are like yeah the boxes mm -hmm. so much because of the amount of books that are in them um but for the most part it's all kid lit and it's it's stuff that uh i love and it's for me and my family to um to cherish and then i always get the anytime i'm at a, a book signing um i always get it signed to my son um even though he's past that stage of uh, like picture books, I know mm -hmm. at some point he's going to have a little kid and then he's going to say, Oh, I really love the fact that I have these books like signed to me when I was, when I was little. Um, or at least I assume that he'll be like that. Maybe he'll be a jerk and he'll say, I don't really care. Um, but for the most part, I think that will, will work itself out. Um, are 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 you a are, are most of the books that you do have are they like special books like you know artist sign things or are they just plain old boring old books? I I have some signed copies actually. Like um, there are some like very important children's book illustrator um, uh, artists that I really like and that I would love to to own like a, a signed copy and I will get it on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're you're down there where they have. Um, why can't I think of the store now? Um, uh, Books of Wonder. Yes, of course. Yeah, and they have, have like every signed book known to man at that store to be able to pull from. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there, there's that's the challenge is I have too many books right now that are signed, so I can't I can't ever clear out the books because so many of them are signed in a way to uh, to my son. Oh. Like, a bit. so you can't really like sell anything yeah, yeah well i i mean i could but then it would be like well what was the point of getting it signed at that point so <laughs> i need to be 
be nice to him. And it's his collection effectively, but I'm watching over it for a few years. We'll put it that way. A few years it's mine to be able to to look at. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, I gotta get in here and color this thing like crazy. Um, I need more house stuff. I haven't finished those house pieces. We're getting there. It's gonna take a while. Um, You're gonna finish the piece tonight? Oh, I will, yeah. It'll probably be about midnight. <laughs> and I, so you always finish your piece? Yeah, if, if I go, I've gone past uh, in about a five hour stint. Um, mm -hmm. Like even when I work, work on picture books, I generally don't like to stop in the middle if I can. Like I'd rather stay up a, an extra hour or two to get it done. I got it. Than to stop at a weird mm -hmm. point. Um, or, you know, it may not be necessarily to stop or finish the piece, but there's a threshold that I'm trying to meet. Mm -hmm. And if I can continue until I hit that point, I will do it. Um, partially because I just don't like going back to old work. It, always, <laughs> it is called OCD, my yeah. friend. <laughs> oh, it, it's very much an OCD thing. It, it's, it, I finish it now or else I won't ever finish it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I will get this done tonight and hopefully I don't stay up super late because I have a long day at school tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, of meetings basically all day long. Uh, and so I don't want to be absolutely wasted for it, but I'm going to try to get this done by midnight. I can so I got about an hour to to solve what I need to solve. How long how long does it take for you to do like let's say one of the spreads in uh, in a book? How long does it take you to do it? Are we it talking? Really, it, it really depends on like what kind of um, finished level piece. For example, like my new book, it's a very complicated um, um, drawings. Like for example, you need to paint every little detail so it took me seven to eight days sometimes for a big piece with the whole town's uh, little houses you know um, and but there are some pieces it, it took less time so it will be like um, maybe five to seven hours okay that's not yeah that's not bad I, I think to me five to seven hours seems uh, like a, a reason reasonable amount of time. I, I, there are people that I know who like put in, you know, 25 hours on a spread. And I'm like, I just don't understand how you financially, how that makes any sense for you. Mm -hmm. You are, are constantly uh, sort of, you know, as an hourly rate. Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind. Um, but, you know, to each their own, if that's, if that's how they want to, to make their, their living. And they want to they want to cut themselves short. They can. Um, do you do gallery work of any sort? Uh, uh, not specifically for galleries, but I have like this year I had like three shows, group shows, okay. uh, with friends and stuff. So it's not like I create some work specifically for a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy seeing your work in a gallery, or is that sort of just like it's fine, it's up, but it's, it, it's not. Me, uh, it's like um, if I create like a solo show specifically for the show, then I think it's awesome. If it's, it's a group show that I just submit something uh, to a friend, then I don't think it's like very impressive. <laughs> um, do you, do you go to those openings? I can't because a lot of them are not here in New York. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah, but I I still think it's a very impressive thing for them to be able to do it. But it's just for me that it's my old work, yeah. you know. I I don't get very excited to see it. <laughs> Is there uh, do you, do you do it like when you're in those shows? Is it is it work that's for sale? No, for sure. It... Just for like um. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that may be the make or break right there. That's the. Anytime I'm in a show, I'm I'm always putting that sucker up for sale. Uh, <laughs> extra income, that's what I need. Um, all the time, I need that extra money. Uh, it's not all about money, but money is a part of it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, let me. I need to draw in all the details. Uh, I, it's I'm getting down to the point where I'm like drawing small details, and I want to make sure that the details all. Uh, um, are, are are not 
confusing of any sort and now i have to like somehow concentrate which is harder for me um is there uh when you're working um is there a uh, a time frame and a schedule that works for you oh i'm a more night person you're a night person yeah what what is, i don't have morning okay what is what does night mean for mm -hmm. you like what is what is a nighttime schedule is that uh after uh, dinner what? <laughs> what, what was that uh, like after dinner i'm very productive okay. until when <laughs> until like two three okay okay so yeah you're a night person some people say night person they find out it's like they're talking about you know 10 at night and i'm like what that's not a night person um, <laughs> no are you can you function in the morning I don't have morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meaning like you're today I woke up at um one. Uh wait. You woke up at one. One uh, one eight, uh, one PM. What time did you go to bed though? Like six, five, six. Oh, you really are a night person. No, because uh, yesterday it was not willing to 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 stay up so late <laughs> okay i i mean i i'm a night person but i don't stay up until those hours that's yeah because i <laughs> was doing research for my wedding and, and i got like forgot about the time that's not I talking okay, though you're gonna you're gonna run on empty and then oh man we need to <laughs> talk about the about your health you can't let that happen uh <laughs> but i is there a Slept uh, uh, very uh, uh, deep after that. When, when is your wedding? Uh, June. <laughs> June. Okay. Are, are you going somewhere China. for the wedding? What was that? I missed it. I missed China. China. Oh, you're gonna have the wedding in China. Um, yeah. That is a uh, yeah. That's a that's one of those destination weddings where you you have to worry about the. Uh, uh, travel and all the people going yes uh, i'm doing the list at this moment uh, yeah that's how when you uh when you travel back to china you, uh, if i remember correctly you were um i'm trying to remember what the name of the town was that you were from uh, uh hining um uh, like the hangzhou area like one hour from shanghai one two hours from shanghai that's right <laughs> uh, is it, it uh how long is the flight um it it could be very long <laughs> but um around like if it's not transfer then like maybe around 16 hours okay because like when i went to beijing it was a 14 or 15 hour flight Perfect. yeah going south it will be longer yeah so you have to yeah you got to go a little bit further that's yeah. a expect people to show up to your wedding and be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed oh <laughs> People are gonna be spent. Um, is there is there a big uh, is there a big time frame like a uh, uh, time before the wedding that people show up, or do you are you still at the point where you're like figuring it all out completely? Uh, figuring out completely, <laughs> and we're pretty late. <laughs> yes, I know I'm pretty late. I need to figure out the wedding dress first. Oh. I, I tried to run it yesterday and then online they say you need to come to, to to try it you need you need a place where like um where they need a, the equivalent of one of those you know those tuxedo t-shirts <laughs> they need a they need a wedding dress t-shirt and then you're all set and you don't have to dress up at all uh you just you wear that sucker in and you're good <laughs> um i'm trying to like my wife and i when we got married ages ago uh ages ago it feels like forever uh it's been awful um no, uh when we got married uh we did it super easy like we were going to do a big wedding and then we decided we're not going to do anything uh that uh that complicated and we ended up having like i think 10 people total there uh and boy did it make it it easy and palatable for us because we were stressing out so much um and we realized it didn't need that are, are you doing a big honeymoon somewhere not planted yet because we don't have enough time ah, ah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah have you ever looked into ohio for a honeymoon 
<laughs> the worst the worst place to go on a honeymoon too uh have you ever have you ever heard of uh uh cleveland i've heard it's yeah. lovely in july <laughs> um we used to have friends there and she's working for the uh the company american greeting cars oh is that there i didn't realize yes that there. i think so uh, whenever I think of greeting cards, I always just immediately go to uh, uh, Hallmark. That's down in uh, Kansas. Oh. I forgot about American greeting cards being out there. Um, <laughs> let me uh, see what I can do. Uh, hey, I might have viewers from Cleveland. Mrs. Hoffy says, okay, if there's anybody from Cleveland right now that I just trashed and made fun of your of your city, tough. Deal with it. Show up. Show up at my front door. And we will fight. Um, <laughs> is there is there a, a location like obviously getting over to China? How I mean, you grew up there, but do you get back there often? No, um, because it's very uh, difficult for us for me, especially to to go to China uh, during COVID. Okay. COVID makes everything different. So I I haven't been back for many years. Is it, COVID. is it uh, um, or are there concerns? Uh, I don't. I don't even know. Like with something like having a visa and whatnot, when you came over, were there concerns about? Because there, there's some, there's some countries like once you go back, it's hard to, uh, or it's hard to leave the country and then come back. Or there's there's limitations with with the way. No, no limitations. Back. No limitations. I don't know if that was part of the factor that that weighed in. Um, um it, it, because you're Chinese, for example, I. I go back and then I, I just come back freely. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. fight. It's like, yeah, it's like a normal trip, family trip. Um, get out of there. Is that right? Let's make sure I have the right marker here. Um, I, uh, I did love when I went over there. Now, I went to a different region. We went up north. So you're, you're in the south, right? Of, of China. Yes, yes. Yeah. Cantonese area for, for my, my boyfriend. We, we went up. To, like we were close to the uh north korean border uh like way up there where and we went in the middle of january and it was freezing cold is it um it's a place called yanji it's a little town you can uh, see we, north korea yeah we were not that close but i mean we, it, <laughs> it was it was close it was it was surprisingly close to uh to the reach i'm trying to remember the name of uh uh uh, shoot, where was it that I went? We were in Beijing for a while, and then we took a train ride up to, we were going to visit a, a college that was there and start talking about a relationship with, with the college to our college. Um, but I remember uh, one of the things that, that really surprised me when I went there, this is this is the cultural exchange moment of the night. Um, my It was me with the dean at the time, uh, and we were traveling and we we were in this train station and they had a dunkin donuts uh, uh and we were like oh we'll try a dunkin donut i can't believe they have dunkin donuts here and i got this one that looked amazing it was this like blueberry one with a little blueberry on top and i was like this thing looks lovely and it was the least sweet donut i have ever had <laughs> it was i won't say it was bitter but it was pretty darn close to that um in the sense of like it just did not have the american sweet uh, dessert with it. Um, but I did have some of the best tofu in my life there, uh, at, at some uh, fancy restaurant. I don't even know what it was called, but it was amazing. Um, and I had mushrooms and I don't like mushrooms. <laughs> uh, is there, is there a, a home cooked meal when you go home? You're like, this is the one I got to get. Yeah. It's like, a a sticky rice wrapped uh, salty eggs and then some um, pork bones um pork um like pork ribs and then steam it or boiled it so it's like a soy sauce uh, salty it's like a little salty um like rice ball almost like a rice ball it's it was my um breakfast when i was in high school <laughs> yes. you know what okay so this is me being like dumb american so get, forgive me I was surprised how savory breakfast was <laughs> outside of the United States. And I was like, I, I the, the idea of like, we had boiled, not boiled peanuts. We had fried peanuts for a meal uh, in the morning one time. And I was like, that's, that's a breakfast. And they were wonderful, but it just floored me because I was expecting like, Oh, I'm going to have some, 
some little pastry or something of the sort. And we had like uh, a noodle dish and things that were just like so uh, uh, different from my expectations because I was coming from this like very white, uh, boring, boring <laughs> world. Let's put it that way. Um, now, does that mean I'm having savory dishes for breakfast right now? No, I'm good. I, I want my sweet stuff, but um, <laughs> what, okay. Give me, give me foreign exchange. When you came to the U.S., what surprised you? Oh, no one. Um, uh, like a lot of my American friends, they don't, they don't buy like the whole, whole animal food. For example, if they eat meat, they're not vegetarian. Yeah, they will. Uh, buy like uh, for example frozen chicken nuggets or like a like chicken legs or chicken yeah. wings you know um but you don't buy the whole chicken like if i go to chinatown i will probably get a uh, like a whole chicken <laughs> and then make soup or or a whole fish you know what i mean so i tucked like two whole fish in my fridge and my roommate was like surprised <laughs> that's a uh... Like oh my god, I've never seen like their their eyes, like their eyes open. Yes, I was like yeah, of course their their eyes are opening. Yeah, they're they're uh, the whole the whole thing is there, and you you uh, use every bit of it. Uh, yeah, and, or... but like you you eat the same. It's just like they, they they're not used to like a lot of my uh, friends. They they they're not used to see um, like the whole fish in their fridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. That I, I, there have been times where, um, uh, even at school, people, I, because we live near the coast, uh, there's a uh, fisherman and whatnot. There was a day where I went into the fridge, the, the, the like communal lounge fridge, and there was just a fish wrapped up, a whole fish just sitting there in the fridge. Some student left it there because they, I don't even know if they caught it or something like that. They were going to mm -hmm. eat it. But everybody was like, did you know there was a fish in the fridge a whole fish <laughs> but like so all that happens and we all we all get past it um i'm still like trying to figure out exactly how i want to lay out some of these details on this thing um how's the how's the color coming i'm watching slowly in the background you mean oh, my work it, it's a very haunting image from from a distance and i know that it's maybe not up close but those trees make it very scary looking <laughs> i'm like i'm watching you now for a minute just watching layers how many layers do you have going right now right now is there some empty ones i don't remember opening so i don't do the math this one doesn't need this one doesn't need so this one is a sketch so you one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay, so it's not, yeah, it's not a ton at this point. I was, I didn't know if you're one of those people that has like a hundred layers. I don't like to do that. Yeah. It's just my brain doesn't work that way. Now, are all those layers labeled like they're supposed to be? No. <laughs> they're numbers. <laughs> and you know, you know what's on each one? Yes. You don't have to fight it. Um, I have uh, one of my um, coworkers is a uh, is a, a Photoshop person and does you know will end up with hundreds of layers of, of different layer styles and whatnot and I am not the person that would ever enjoy that and don't uh, I, I'm not one who layers my or names my layers until I have to hand them off to an art director and then. <laughs> I'm very like, oh, I got to go back and layer everything and I got to make sure they look all beautiful. And I don't even have a lot of layers. I have like three layers, but it's it's very laborious for me and I hate having to do it. Um, yeah, I have the experience, the similar experience, like when the clients ask me to, I will do it. But do you hand in layered files just at the beginning or do you just wait until they come back and say, we need a layered one? Oh, unless they ask, I will never do that. Even I mean, with the kidlet stuff, you must have gotten asked for layered files. Uh, uh, the, if they ask the layered files, they will ask. Uh, they will tell me ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if they're not, I'm just gonna throw them the messy. The finished. The finished. Yes, yeah. and then you can do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I have, I do have some publishers that have, have like a rule sheet of like, when you hand it in, make sure it's this DPI and most of it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. part of the challenge that I have is I, I hand letter type some in the books mm -hmm. uh, and then it becomes, they have to have the, uh, uh, the layer on or the type on a separate layer for translation purposes. And then it gets more complicated. And then if there's effects that are on the layer that need to be, um, uh, not permanent because they might change out that type then i have to like uh manage that as well and um i just i layered stuff but it's it's because i'm doing stuff traditionally still there's the image itself is just one layer it's all those extra bells and whistles that have to be um a single or, or separated out um do you, do you get a lot of revisions on your work when you when you do the editorial like do you get a lot of notes yeah uh, for for the finals, I'm okay. I'm I don't get a lot of uh, revisions. Do you ever get ones that you've disagreed with? Of course. <laughs> I you, think everyone for, has. for those that are listening that go, what do you do in that situation? How did you handle that? Uh, um, I will try my best to argue. Some art directors they don't like that. Um, you mean the the argument or just? just to fight for their art, art directions. Yeah. Do you, do you find, uh, have you had one where like you've, you've uh, had to bring it to another level? Yes. Like raise it up the, the chain yes. and did you win? Yes. I win, but she said she will never work with me again. Mm. Okay. And, and I don't, I don't really mind it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. sure. That's it. Uh, I don't want to work with you again either. <laughs> like, bye. There's, there's enough of a challenge that yeah, like, this is a, it benefits us both. Yeah, because it's not for for us. Like, uh, uh, we're we're clearly not eat for each other. Yeah. Then we should part away. You know. Um. And then, have you had obviously without naming names, mm -hmm. have you had a clientele that you worked for that were uh, challenging in other ways, or is it primarily a, a good relationship? Mm. What do you mean by, by, uh, the first part? Well, like, uh, art directors that are very demanding or oh, yes. <laughs> uh, like having a vision for the stuff and they come to you with notes is one thing, but sometimes they'll come up front and say like, we need this, 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 and this in it before you even start the project or do any sort of uh, sketching. Mm -hmm. Is there um, uh, uh, art directors that you would do anything for because working for them was so pleasurable? Oh, yeah. yes. Who are those folks? Give us names. You can give names on that one. Uh, it's, That's it's normally like a lot of them, they're not art director anymore. But they're definitely very easy ones. For example, there is a website called On Being. Okay. Yeah, and then I actually enjoy working for Amazon. <laughs> well, the what? Wait, what did what did you do for Amazon? Was it a uh, 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 kids guy a book guide for? They hired me for uh, like uh, uh, nine week uh, uh, no nine nine months six seven months mm -hmm. for a project. And then I find it very happy to work with them. Uh, it's easy. It's also like they, they're very cheering. They, they, they give you like a lot of uh, uh, good comments and then cheer you up so that you feel like you, you're, you're very good at it, what you're doing. Right. <laughs> they make you feel good. They, they build, yeah. build up your ego. For <laughs> and then they pay very well. So I was like, okay, this is tech company's payment. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know, and how editorial pays. Yeah. And, and, and at the same time, they have high standard. The, um, did you get any freebies while working for Amazon? Um, did you get free prime? What? Oh, you mean like, like, like some, something free? Yeah. <laughs> no. Did you get, did you you get to meet Jeff Bezos? No. Hanging <laughs> out with you all day long going like, cool, let me see what you're doing. Um, but he might see, see what I did. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. We sure, sure he did. Yeah, working for um like Apple is also a good experience for me at least. Uh, like I I had some conclusion with like the people I like to work with. They don't have a very high standard. <laughs> wait 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 wait. The people you don't like to work with. The, the people I like to work with, they don't have a very high expectation before working with me. Okay, that's different than a high standard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not high standard, but like you know what I mean. Like they don't have high expectations. <laughs> they don't have high expectations for example they they won't ask you to create something you can win a society of illustrators gold medal yeah but for a lot of the the art uh like the um editorial people they the art directors they 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 want to have that kind of quality but they only pay you 500. the uh and then they want it in two days yeah are you, <laughs> you know now, you've done stuff for like new york times and that kind of stuff where it's like the turnaround is a day yeah or, and are you okay with that sort of that high-end pressure on that because some people like editorial because they like the high-end pressure some people hate it i hated it but i i also i feel like i can handle it so uh the, it's okay it's okay to 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 do it once in a while <laughs> but i'm not young enough anymore so like sometimes i don't i just can't i have to reject some of the the projects well, yeah, you're so young though that you're staying up until six in the morning, <laughs> watching watching your movies while you're in the middle of playing or in the middle of making your work. Um, I think I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to like, I don't want to overwork the piece. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little uh, a little congested, and so I might need to to call this one for the night. Um, I'm trying. I feel like there's one thing that's missing. I don't know what it is yet, and I got to figure that out, but. I'm getting there to a point where I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to push my luck. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, how close are you to getting done with that one? Um, still a little bit of work, but I think I'm almost there. Um, I can do a sample for you. Like I will do the eraser at this moment. Oh, oh wait, the eraser. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm going to watch for a second. Are you erasing out like the highlights? Uh, I, I'm erasing out like a, like a. Oh, um, the flashlight. Yeah. Yeah, I got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, but I, I, I still don't want to hide all the details I've been working on. Yeah. In the dark, so I'm gonna do something about it, but not probably because you said you you want to call at the night, so I'm just stop going to stop working. No, no, I want you. I, I'm, I can keep going, and and I don't. Uh, it's it's a matter of like I'm doing tiny details. Right mm -hmm. now, I, I still have another, uh, where are we at, 1130? I still have another like half hour in me mm -hmm. and doing it. I just, I, I'm i I'm trying to be mindful that I don't overwork this. In okay, okay. So I'm, I'm happy to continue, continue. Don't get me wrong in that sense. We're, we're, we're all in uh, at this point. Um, so tell me, uh, let, let's go back to sort of the, uh, the inspiration level for you. Um, when you were growing up and you said you wanted to be an illustrator mm -hmm. and you were like four years old and your uh, your family was was in support of it, which is again, super lovely. Was there, um, were there artists at that time that you were looking at that now you go like, ooh, what was I thinking? Yes, uh, <laughs> but uh, they're all Chinese. A lot yeah. of them are Chinese. <laughs> yeah, because I grew up with like Chinese comics. Yeah. Is that just because you, you know, that was um, uh, what you were influenced by, or was that? I mean, I'm... that's the only. Yeah, it's mostly like the only thing I can get. Yeah. Uh, like it's the one magazine that every kids want. And then, at what point did you decide that Kidlit was something that you wanted to make work in? Uh, I want to be like them. Well, what do you mean by that? I don't, I don't follow that yet. Yes. So, so can you also repeat your questions again? Well, just the sense of like, <laughs> just make sure. no, like for me, there was a threshold wherein I had a kid and I was introduced to a lot more sort of kid lit work just in general. Mm -hmm. And then all came, oh, well, maybe I should get into kid lit. Um, and there was, there was a moment that happened. 
right? But I also, when I was in college, I studied some kid lit, like I took some classes and whatnot. Um, so it's not like it was out of left field for me. Mm -hmm. But was there was there a moment or a um, uh, a a timeline in which the kid lit became something that felt like you wanted to achieve it? Um, I, I don't remember this like specific moment, but I actually read a comic. Um, I still have the whole collection. It's Sakura Momoko. So it's a Japanese comic. Uh, and then this illustrator, this comic artist, she wrote about, uh, she, she has a lot of like um, writings also got published. I have all of them above me. And then this illustrator, he, 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 he dreamed of um, making books and then he, he, he record everything in his, uh, in her comic. Yeah. Like for example, like she wrote about like how she become famous, how her first short story published by the, the famous magazine and how she become like a professional comic artist, etc. So, so I want to just be like her. Yeah. Yeah. And then from that moment, I, do you know why I stopped, um, working with Chinese, um, Chinese publishers, um, after I come to the U.S. because I want to switch to a different age uh, of my audience. The first group is all young adult. So when I was working for Chinese uh, magazines earlier times, all the uh, papers, uh, all the newspapers, uh, magazines I've been working with, they're all young adult or teenager uh, readers. And after, after I um, came to the U.S., I actually want to pursue more of an adult direction yeah 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 i want to try different things so so like these are all moments for me like to trigger something um new want to do something more what when, when you did decide to come and you went to micah mm -hmm. what what was it that um that drew you to that school was it something that was in the program that allowed you to aim towards an older audience I mean, most, most grad programs in general, it's like, work on what you got to work on mm -hmm. and we're here to support you. But was there a reason why that school became the, the go-to? Oh, because of my boyfriend, but I don't, I don't, I, I, I did not date with him at that moment yet. Oh, okay. You just... He was very popular. He was like really <laughs> famous in China. So he's the first generation of the program and I'm the second generation. So I talked to him. I asked him a lot of questions. Wait, is this is this your fiance now? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you you followed a boy to America? <laughs> is that what you did? Just followed a boy to America? Yeah, technically speaking, yes. <laughs> oh, we got some. Um, did your parents think that was a wise idea? <laughs> I just—it's that classic like movie trope of like going to the college that your boyfriend or your girlfriend is going to and then all of a sudden like it all goes south yeah. but obviously it yeah, but we, we haven't dated during that time i just like okay lo really look up to to uh, to his work gotcha his works yeah. are very good what what was your master's on what was the, the like thesis project uh thesis project is a uh, a book about my 12 year old and 24 year old of myself so it's oh. a, a, um, a cosmic seat. Okay. I did, um, I think six, six to eight screen printing, uh, 44 pages um, book, uh, and a stop motion animation. Oof. Wait, a 44 page book and it was all screen printed? Uh, it's not. <laughs> wait, wait, I didn't follow then. I thought you said you screen printed it. Yeah, I have, have an extra like uh, uh, eight, uh, screen printing works. Oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, did how, how rough was the, the crits? Did you guys have big long, like when I was in grad program, we had big, like eight hour long crits. We have. Yeah. yeah uh, and you have to do, uh, gallery talks. Um, okay. okay. And we got Josh Cochran. Oh, Josh Cochran. Wow. Yes. That and he was younger than the age I am. 
<laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's been 10 years. How old is he? He was uh, uh, pretty young when he came to my guy. It's 10 years ago. I just, I mean, I'm trying to think like, I loved his work and I still love his work, but I loved his work when he was first starting out, but I always assumed that he was like, you know, he had been around for a while and I just happened to find him. I didn't realize that it was uh, new uh, or that he was new to the world in that manner. I think he's like 40 into his 40s. Oh, well, but um, okay. I, I met him. He's like 30s at the beginning of 30. So, so, uh, but I was 22, you know, so it's, it's, it's like 10 years ago. Wait. I still remember him <laughs> coming and then he gave me my first job. Oh, okay. Wait, what was he an art director? When you when you say you get freelance a job, freelance uh, illustrator, oh. Oh, no fr freelance art director. Oh, I didn't realize that. I know, I mean I know of him as as an illustrator. I didn't realize that he had a an art director. Yeah, he sort of... he's he's doing an art director here and there. Oh, okay. Uh, and he he, he recommended me to Nathan, Nathan Huang. Got, gotcha. I uh, yeah. I always loved uh, Josh Cochran's colors. Yes. On stuff. He he made a uh, kids book recently uh, that was sort of wild and different too, yeah. which was really fun. Yes, uh, it was uh, Enchanted Lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enchanted mm -hmm. Lion. I was talking to someone yesterday, uh, uh, an amazing artist about sort of all the the Fly Nine, Enchanted Lion, and all the like the what I refer to as the artsy fartsy books, where like their work is great stories and whatnot, but it also goes to this weird like uh, indie fine art aesthetic uh, yeah. that shows up stuff and how great they were and they didn't even know about those two publishers and i was like oh you gotta see these publishers because the artist was a a great artist and i think their work would sell instantly to those um to those publishers um i feel like there's one other that's in that same ballpark with enchanted lion and fly and i but i can't think of it right now um oh yeah I, too many too many names in my head <laughs> um how when you actually get a chance to sketch and make um and do stuff for yourself whether it be the 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 knitting or things of the sort um do you does that happen often or is that something where you had to really set some side of time or time aside for it you mean knitting? yeah the knitting or just illustration in general like to, to do stuff that is rewarding for you that is not a it's, job. It's difficult during COVID, but right now I feel very rewarded uh, recently. I like all the drawings I've been creating. I, I love my knitting. <laughs> I love, love talking to my clients. You know, it's just very weird that I'm in a very good situation. Are so you, I'm happy with all. With the clients that you're getting, are you actually seeing them in person, being that you're in New York? You mean um, the clients uh, that I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, they're not, not the uh, illustration clients. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. They're the knitting Knit clients. <laughs> the the see... people who buy my art, this... buy my uh, like, creative. Yeah, that you have. Um, I saw my wife posted a really nice question that I think um, for, for those that enjoy looking at your work and are like, you know, how the hell do you do this? She wrote this question. It's a pretty general question, but I would love to see sort of uh, Oh, no, wait, was that my, no, that wasn't my wife. I'm sorry, I saw her name, I thought, uh, there, but it's someone else. It is, uh, ooh, how do I say this one? Uh, Zoham, no, I'm, I'm just gonna spell it. Z-O-H-A-M-I-N-A-L-I-M-R-A-N. -A -A I just don't know how to say it, so bear with me. I would make it a, a mess there, but they say any tips for absolute beginners on procreate. So like for someone at, at your level, you've been doing this for a while. I'm sure a lot of it is sort of uh, pretty easy for you to, to sort of just do. Mm -hmm. um, but if someone is starting out, are there tips that you think they should actually aim towards um, with uh, like things to avoid or special ways to mess around with the the application that you think would be beneficial to them i highly recommend you to find as much interesting brushes as possible at the beginning okay, okay. yeah because i i do have this issue uh when i started uh using procreate um it it 
give me the, a very, very different uh, feeling uh, in terms of uh, comparing to 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 the Photoshop. So I I did not use a lot of like very amazing um, brushes at first. So I thought this software is <laughs> this software is not great. But after I start to look for uh, brushes and um, get used to the pace, I I noticed that uh, all the tools are good to use after you get used to them. So um, and then different software has different styles. Yeah. So Photoshop tend to draw more uh, like a straightforward, I would say, and uh, Procreate is softer in general. What do so you, wait, what do you mean by softer? Softer is, for example, like you ha you can uh, the the drawing I, I finish is softer on uh, Procreate. I I use Photoshop for a lot of my commercial work, okay. but I use these for more hand drawing style. Got you. Got you. There's, yeah, there's because a... the texture uh, difference, the way they deal with the brushes, the way you draw one, and then when it is finished and not finished, it's it's kind of like a a feeling. Like if you compare it to se several softwares. The details are very different. Yeah, I would say Photoshop is very powerful in terms of, like, for example, uh, editing and uh, 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 adjusting overall. But uh, for Procreate, it's very easy tool. Just almost to me, almost similar to hand hand drawing. Okay, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, like yes, I, Procreate. I feel like it's more like a sketchbook. Mm -hmm. That makes any sense. It's sort of like it's easily to it's easily something to uh to start out in and yeah maybe um uh maybe more responsive than what something like photoshop like photoshop i think there are just so many bells and whistles that in some sense you can just hop on procreate and just pick out a brush and because you're working with your hand on the screen without having to have a, a special cintiq or things and there aren't all the like every button on your uh display it just yeah more sketch uh based um yeah so even what, my brother can can use uh, uh appropriate easily yeah he's only nine yeah. so i think like a lot of kids are doing it as well um i think it's a very good tool uh no matter what uh and then another tip is i i i, I uh, it's it's something i noticed from my teaching so a lot of the kids when they just start using procreate they tend to draw less detailed because they're not used to uh, something so soft. So uh, they they tend to draw pa illustrations more like a non-finished, not finished piece. Yeah. That's what I what I noticed that. So uh, my advice is just add one more hour at least. After you think you're finished, just add one or two hours to the same piece. So you will know after like, you you're more experienced you know what i'm talking about it's very articulate to talk about but just add several hours yeah. and try to zoom in to fix things no I, I like the the next hour is nice because it's like the the sentiment there of of uh and and potentially even an extra hour that's not at the same time mm -hmm. uh so you give yourself a break and then come back to it and go okay i just gotta put an extra hour just tweaking things yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. because to me like yeah finish our uh, like finish the level is based on like your maturity in my opinion like yeah you you know when to stop when you're 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 good or like like when you're five you know when to stop but uh, if you're 19 you saw your five-year-old drawing then you know it's not finished yeah, yeah it's, it's like, it, that's what i meant like if you if you're new to illustration new to procreate just give extra hours Be, you, you, you don't know you don't need to know why <laughs> just yeah <do> it. <laughs> it could be it even what's silly is it could be an hour of you just staring at it <laughs> but hour and and this is, this is like the, the like dumb sentiment but that extra hour of looking at it and understanding what worked what didn't work uh is really really helpful and mm -hmm. the more you do it the i mean this is this is and, and you should know this one too easily is um when you're in the world of crit and you're in the world of looking at at your work uh, or students works on, on a regular basis when it comes down to time where you have to go look at your work you are much faster at spotting 
uh, the challenges or the issues that show up. And so all of a sudden you're not having to, um, uh, you know, search and find them. It's just very instantaneous. Like one of the things that I, uh, I'm fairly good at now, and I, I will take credit for this one. I don't take credit for a lot of, of talent, uh, on my work. Um, but, uh, spotting tangents and, um, you know, probl problematic alignment mm -hmm. work. Um, I can see those pretty quickly now. And when I started out, it was me searching for them, but now I can look at someone's work and instantly go like, Oh, that's a problem. Those things are lining up right there. And okay, you have a good eye. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, it's you, you build that skill over time. And so I think even with procreate, that idea of like, the more you use it, the faster it's going to be because you're just one, you're going to know how to use it, but also um, you're going to be able to spot the challenges or even predict what's going to be a challenge going forward. Mm -hmm. Like when I start to put work down when I, when I'm drawing or things of the sort, and, and I assume you got this too, where you already know like, Oh, if I put this color here, it's going to cause a problem later when I go put the shadow in uh, and, when you're starting out, you may not be able to see that, that sort of like, it's almost like chess moves. You may not mm -hmm. see that, that issue ahead of time. And then all of a sudden you get to a point where like that does just become, Oh, I see it. I know it's going to happen. And so I can adjust for it ahead of time and, and, and fix those uh, situations. Um, but that just comes with practice. I'm always the, I've always been in the mindset. And part of this is because of the way that I, I went through school, it was a lot of like, just go push the buttons figure out what stuff does and then come back and then figure out how to make work with it. Um, and so a lot of my, my upbringing through the Adobe products was not uh, training videos. There was no YouTube at the time to go and say, Oh, how, you know, let me go find a video that explains how to do this. Uh, that wasn't available. And so instead it was, you literally just push buttons. And mm -hmm. the cool thing is I don't use half of those buttons. Most of them don't mean, a thing to me at this point. So <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I did find things though that became, you know, my go tos. Um, and like mu slowly muscle memory, building your muscle memory yeah. and your creative uh, system. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and all of that matters uh, in the end. Let's put it that way. Uh, all right. I think I am at a point where I really can't touch this more. Otherwise, I, I ruin it. Um, yeah. I, for, I, for what I I think I'm like almost finished it, but like I, I need some other adjustment, but I think it's uh, good to call it at the end today. It's passable. It's uh, I mean, we're, we're within minutes of this being over for the night because it only goes four hours and then it's, mm -hmm. but you know what happened though? It never kicked us out of Instagram. <laughs> it never stopped us uh, along the way and said, guess what? You no longer are part of Instagram. Um, when the last time when I saw you posting or like talking about your sketchbooks, I was like, how is it working for you? And I not for me, you, <laughs> but then you, I think you said right afterwards, like soon thereafter it, it kicked you out. Um, I don't even know. I looked the next day trying to figure out how long that system was down. Uh, but I think it was like a, at least a few hours. It was enough that it didn't merit trying to hop back on for the night. Um, but I, I will say right now, right off the bat, I have had a lovely time chatting with you. Um, and it has been a absolute honor to have you on. And I hope your students, if your students are still listening. <laughs> it's a long conversation. So some of them might left. <laughs> yeah. Some of them probably just have it on in the background so they can get the credit for, uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for being part of it, but not actually be here. Um, that's, I want, I want, uh, put that past any student. Um, uh, Bear Edwards uh, wrote saying, nice work both. Thanks for streaming. Uh, thank you, Bear, for uh, for joining us uh, uh, tonight and um, uh, participating in this uh, strange conversation. It's always strange. It always goes weird spots. But um, uh, this guy, I I, I do want to say thank you so much for joining me and for coming back a second time after what happened. The first <laughs> and I know it's not my fault. I'm going to, I'm not going to take blame for it, but also I feel like it's my fault. Uh, <laughs> it's not your fault at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you didn't run away scared and say, I'm not coming back there ever. And uh, I'm done. Um, and this has been enjoyable. I hope it was enjoyable for you. 
uh, to sit and chat and, uh, and make work. So um, if anybody does not have any of Lisk's uh, books or has not, uh, which first of all, shame on you if you, if you don't have <laughs> them, but go out and get them and uh, add to your collection and follow and do all the, all the things that we need to do to support each other. So uh, I see some says, thanks uh, for the two of you sharing, learned a lot. Good. We learned that that Lisk likes baths and <laughs> and uh, little things and uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, oh wait, listening and feel I was in Lisk's class. LOL. There you go. See. <laughs> you have to do this. You got to get yourself a good camera set up. All I have is a little clamp-on desk thing that's got a ring light, and my phone can connect to it, and that's all you need. That's all you need. Um. Oh, do you know, yeah, Jojo in art says, yes, we're still here. Thank you so much for sharing experiences. Um, so Jojo's coming in hot again for that, that A, and so is. <laughs> He's definitely an A plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we can, we can read through that. And we know that, that, that you're kissing ass real, real hard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. wow. Um, it's four uh, hours. You still there. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> They, they did the research and they said, if I come in at the beginning and I leave in the middle and come back at the end of the <laughs> night, good. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people saying that they love you uh, and uh, miss you, miss your class. Aww. Uh, oh, here's one that says they hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally not. Uh, but again, thank you. And I will be in touch post um, uh, tonight and uh, I'll, I'll uh, I'll be conversing with you throughout time because this has been wonderful. So, thank you. Yeah. And I almost been. I think I finished my drawing. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's see. I'm 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 watching the feed. It's got a little delay, so I'm watching. Oh, look at that! Are you gonna post this on Instagram? Yeah, I can. I have all the process recorded. <gasps> oh boy. Okay. Yes. Post that up, and and if you would. Uh, tag me in it give me a little uh at so i can see the finished work uh so it automatically pops up for me i'm gonna do the same i'm gonna um i'm gonna post this on sunday because it's easter related uh it's got a bunny and i will tag you so you can see the the finished version because this instagram does not do justice uh sure do, do, i want to draw a ghost here maybe a, here a little ghost yeah, uh, yeah and then uh, that's it okay or like somewhere here i'm i'm uh Oh yeah, like a little, just tiny hidden ghost. Yeah, like a a, a tiny head. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um. So, I will be in touch. This has been lovely, and I will talk to you soon. Sure. Sure. Okay. Go have a good night. Don't stay up until six. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>